I thought you were going to talk over it. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to finish. No, this is your bed. America, as your neighbor to the north, as the guy who lives in the apartment above you, we just wanted to wish you a happy freedom birthday. Yeah. 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 Bald eagles and apple pie and giant plastic cheese. Chestnut and- hot dogs in your mouth. Yeah. 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 America. Wood. What? It would have been good if you just left it <laughs> no. but again. But no. Canago Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wild. We have a trade to announce. Yay! Yay! Screw Patrick Marlowe. We got to start with something that happened right before the show. What? what Are happened? you feeling okay, NHL? You're doing things before the show? Okay. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes acquire Marcus Kruger from Vegas. Uh, Ron Francis, executive vice president and general manager of the National Hockey League's Carolina Hurricanes, today announced that the team has acquired forward Marcus Kruger from the Vegas Golden Knights in exchange for a fifth-round selection in the 2018 NHL draft. Hmm. So there it is. Just a fifth-rounder? Just a fifth, yeah. Do so they have to reach the floor? I... So here's what I'm trying to figure out. Because Kruger was traded because he makes three and a half, right? Or three or something? 3.8 or something. The Blackhawks paid him a $2 million signing bonus on July 1st. So you're really you're getting a, a third, fourth line guy, probably a third line guy for $1.8 million a season. For yeah. this particular season. I'm so, so my confusion is why couldn't Chicago just trade him to... Why? Why couldn't Chicago just do that? Didn't Vegas have a deal in place, or didn't Vegas have a thing in place where you couldn't trade with other teams, only with Vegas? I, I guess, but like, so my confusion is the so the Blackhawks took Trevor Van Riems like anyway. Uh huh. Um, who, they were who else were they gonna take? So like, did they work out this deal where okay, you can take the guy that you're clearly going to take anyway, but also take this guy? I and think flip there might have been a better option than Trevor Van Riemsdyk, but I can't remember what it w- might have been. I don't think so. No, Not that I remember. I that's, that's oh, maybe Richard one. Ponick? No, you want TVR over Ponick? Probably, yeah. but maybe I don't. Uh, whatever. Vegas gets another middling pick. Good for them. <laughs> hmm. Not even middling. That's really late in the draft. I don't know. I find a lot of what Vegas is doing to be strange. It's just very I don't, bizarre. They don't get stuff. Don't All get the it. picks. Wait till they make the playoffs, and then everyone next will year. Their words, yeah, yeah, next, yeah, next year. Well, season. the the West is falling. The West is falling. Okay, I I talk about next season. What am I talking about? Uh, mm. This this coming season, right? I'm having no. that struggle right now. No, it's this season now. Well, no, it hasn't started yet. So it is next season. No, but so when no, I say next season, as it starts, it is know. this season. As soon as it kicks off. Not preseason. As soon as the season starts in early October, now it's this season. So, like, day before. Mm-hmm. So, like, Wednesday. You're on Tuesday. Still next games, season. No. Has to be. Has to be. It's so, cruel. what's this season, then? This season? Yeah. Is summer. Right now, we're in the no. summer season. <laughs> you have to be in a season. Hey, hey you know how do you think the Leafs are going to do this season? Uh, this season? Yeah. This coming season, you mean? Next season. This season. We've already seen what they did this season. Th- that's no, untrue. This, that was this season. season. They have done what they did this season. That was last season. See, it's I was done. just about to correct Adam by saying this season is over, so maybe he's got something. This se- it is. Listen, it's last season. Listen, all right. Here's, here's because this season is over. This so sounds so like I a think the Leafs, gonna, uh, the Leafs are going <laughs> to make the like playoffs. Something you should definitely call out someone's mother and say terrible things about their family for sure on our Reddit page about. Sure. So is this a correct sentence? Based on how the Leafs performed this season, I think they're going to make the playoffs this season. <laughs> no, that's not no, true. So what's, you what's, can't have two seasons. So based on Next how the season. Leafs performed season. this season, this they're going to make the playoffs. Next season, or based on how the Leafs played last season, I think they're going to make the playoffs. That's the one. This that's season. the side Adams on the no season. Is so, that correct? So oh, we're well, just I, in a void. I think you floating. can say either that we're in no. Yeah, because we are in a void. So yeah, we're we're in no season. We're in no season because there's no games being played, right? Okay. Fair? Eric. So you could still say last season and mean literally a month ago. Yes, because it is last season. Yeah. But we're that in the means ether we're now. I don't think there's a no season. We're in the ether. I so think there's a this season. The day after the draft, what do you call it? Like, oh, the, the do you refer over. to last the, season? No, Stanley when Cup. the Stanley Cup's awarded. Yeah. There you go. Season's That's when the season ends. See, I think it's a draft thing, but no, you, you, that that kind of makes more sense because games. You know what, Steve? Make the draft schmaft. Okay, 
Yeah, okay, they're draft cliff. Schmaft. Well, hell. <laughs> George McPhee is doesn't heck, think that. Heck and golly. Is heck this, and golly. Is this Gar Snow? <laughs> Should we start with that? Well, or Patrick no. Marlowe? No. Snow or Marlowe? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's um, what <laughs> wow, that's hilarious. Yes. Um, okay, free agency. We've seen it. It happened. It's still happening. There are still some yep. big names out there. We're going to start with the Leafs because, duh. Um, Reasons. Adam had to remind me in the elevator on the way up that we haven't done a show since free, free agency. agency started. I was like, wow, Patrick Marlowe and nothing else. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that everything happened. So Patrick Marlowe goes to the Toronto Maple Leafs. What? We're going to start with him. Yes. I know we're working backwards here a little bit. We'll get to Hainsey and more. I they'll think be, it makes sense. They'll be pretty short. Uh, you know how many people are like, talk about Colin don't, Greening! Don't do that. Oh, sorry. Do that. Okay. Did I... Just your computer? Please. I'm sorry. His, Jesse's computer's fragile on, on its last <laughs> yeah, legs. Yeah. Please, stop. <laughs> please, please, don't stop. hurt me. Just don't. Don't bang on the it table. He desperately <laughs> wants to retire, but Jesse will not let it. No. It's perfectly fine. Jesse's when computer... When people don't bang on tables. Jesse's computer is Patrick Marlowe. <laughs> it deserves a three year deal. Still it's still doing well. You're just a little bit afraid that at some point it's gonna fall off a cliff when you really need it. Play wise. Maybe. Maybe. I think it's the anti Yager. Because Jesse is forcing it to work even though it just wants to quit. That's, Whereas Yager is getting no calls, but he wants to keep playing. That's completely untrue. I'm not forcing it. It is perfectly capable of working oh. as it's demonstrated. Mm. That's right. Right. He is lying. Please put me out of my misery. <laughs> yep. Anyway, sorry. So that'll be Patrick fun. Marlo. One day when Jesse can't look up cat friendly as soon as we need it. Um, <laughs> we so, just start screaming, Jesse! <laughs> so, Jess, uh, so Patrick, so Jesse, so Patrick Marlo signs for three years, $6.25 million each year. Let yeah. us be clear. Let us be clear right now. Yeah. Before we get into the conversation on this, Patrick Marlo and Ron Hainsey were overpaid for. Oh, yeah. So let's just get that off the table. We know. Did you get someone in free agency? You overbid. Bingo. In fact, I, I think there might have been one actual fair-ish deal. But we'll, there's a reason for that fair-ish deal, and I'll give you my fair-ish deal. Mm. It was a big contract, too. Okay. Fair-ish deal. Okay. Uh, coming up. But for, first, Patrick Marlowe. Yes. 38 when the season starts, when yes. this next season starts. Yes. Um, and it's when the current season starts. <laughs> 38 this season. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun all summer. Uh, we're going to have this debate all Every summer. Every single long. guest we have on, we need to ask them this question. This yeah. is a, I think this what is an important question. Is or that it? question. <laughs> <laughs> this past question. <laughs> Are we this currently asking the question? <laughs> or is it a question that exists now? And then we can refer to it as that question. Uh, is it question season? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> All right. And so. do we spell season S-Z-N? Yes. Yes. Is it, is it yeah, this Yeah, because we're millennials. Season? Yeah. I While we know. eat our avocado toast, that's what we do. Okay. Um, so we, we The show is broke, by the way. <laughs> Whatever, man. It's summer. This show? Uh, or that, that show. show. <laughs> that, or this that coming show. show. Or th <laughs> yeah, because the show's not over! The, sh the show hasn't been done but yet. But the show has so started. It's this coming show. But it has started. What show so are we in? Show. I can't wait to tweet. You won't believe what we talked about on this past show. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. And nobody's the show's gonna get done. It. Nobody's going to get it at the beginning. Nobody. What show are we in? <laughs> Yo, this is so... Inception for me. Again, man. I Rick and Morty this. just floating in a timeless oblivion <laughs> with a bunch of cats. Rick and Morty are dead, though. But what? The, the, oh, is that Morty, the theory? Morty killed Morty. Morty I haven't seen Morty? season three yet. Did you just ruin it? No. This happened in like season two. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yes, but there are infinite Mortys and infinite But Ricks. is the original Morty still buried in the backyard? Who's the original Morty? I know that's what I'm there asking. There is no original Morty. It's just a bunch of. And what season of that show are we? In? Reality's three. There's only two seasons, oh. and then they just yeah, had, they're starting they had the three. first episode of season three, which is one of the best episodes of any cartoon I've ever seen in my yes. entire life. Okay, it's yes. incredible. Um, all right, uh. Patrick Marlowe, three years with the Leafs. What's interesting about his contract? <laughs> Closer is... in age to Rick than Morty. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Let's just, let's go. Let's let's get in on this. <laughs> um, Patrick Marlowe, bonus laden deal. Yes. Holy so smokes. this is important, and I'm going to bring it up specifically, um, but when you're talking about a deal that for a 37-year-old, 38-year-old, this is a very 
tenu- tenuous time to give anybody any sort of money. We saw this same thing happen with Stefan Robida and how much trouble it landed yeah. the Leafs in. I think he was 38. Yes, but the thing with Stefan Robida is within the past two seasons, he'd had he'd He's shattered coming one off leg of two broken legs. and broken the other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Patrick Marlowe, not so much. So Patrick Marlowe instantly becomes the highest played player on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mm-hmm. Just below, and that includes Nathan Horton and Joffrey Lupo. <laughs> that's right. Just below uh, Mike Babcock. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. So his bonus is this season. His bonus this season, $7 million. Boy. His bonus next season is 4.5. Mm-hmm. His bonus the season after that is three. Um, Severely overpaid. So essentially, said the Leaf fan who had no problem with the Leafs paying like twenty million dollars to players who didn't even skate last season. Exactly. Yeah. So he's a guy that gets paid most of his money on July first. Yes. The rest of the time, you have a situation like what Marcus Kruger had, where he got he has he's paid and yes his cap hit is large but is the actual payments that a team has to make are actually quite small yeah carolina i believe is not all that close to the cap so the cap hit would scare a lot of teams but not them and then you look at marcus kruger's salary and you go eh, i don't know and then all of a sudden you take two million dollars off of that and you go oh sure now that still Come counts against the cap yes. but we're talking about real dollars and dollars. cents to a team like carolina or arizona uh, Florida, apparently this matters now. Apparently they're they're cutting they probably should. budget slashing. I don't know. Um, you know, th- that sort of thing makes the contract at, at the very least movable. That does make it movable in the third year. Yes. So July 2nd in two years, we might be going, okay, well, it's time to move Patrick Marlowe or he's going to retire and we're going to send a pick along to another team and he retires and that cap hits there. But we've already paid him, and it's really it's no money out of that team's pocket, right? Mm-hmm. So that off the table. Now that you know the structure of the deal, what do you think of the deal? Well, okay. In terms of Marlowe's longevity, um, we always praise Phil Kessel for his Ironman streak, um, which b- began in the 09-10 season uh, after coming off a of shoulder surgery. Uh, Hurt his shoulder with the Boston Bruins, needed shoulder surgery, got traded to the Leafs like 10 games into the season, started his Ironman streak, still is going today after two cups. And, uh, and infinitesimal hot dogs. Yes. Infinitesimal. Oh. oh, that was terrible. <laughs> the season before that is when Patrick Marlowe's Ironman streak started. Wow. And he was older the entire time. <laughs> he's done it much older, and he's 38. Uh, he can still fly. He's great. So, sorry, your question was, what do I think of the deal? What do you think of the deal? Honest thoughts. It's a, it's an overpayment, for sure. For sure. It's, it's a lot of money. Too much money. But good teams, uh, often, when they're going for it, sign guys for too much money in free agency. It's just kind of the way of the world. Like, I think Lee's fans are sort of... Uh, having to learn things that they forgot, you know, oh, th- two things, two two things show this. One, their handling of Marlowe and it being too much money. Of course, it's too much money. It's in free agency. Literally, every single player was signed for. Too if much you're going to sign somebody in free opinion. agency, there are no good deals. Yeah. on July first. There's what they're worth, and then there's the other teams you're competing with. So you have to offer more. Ron Hainsey's not three million bucks. No, but Ron Hainsey's three million bucks. But yeah, on July first. If Ron Hainsey is. Two and a half million bucks. He's three million bucks. Does that make sense? You got to pay something to get something. That's right. <laughs> That's right. A wise man once said. Uh, yes, and we're talking about Captain Cheap over here. That's me. Um, the other one was Brian Boyle. Uh, Leaf fans getting upset that he wasn't returning to the team, and oh, they're getting Dominic Moore to replace Brian Boyle. No, they're not getting Dominic Moore to replace Brian Boyle. They're getting Dominic Moore to replace the carousel that came before Brian Boyle. Brian Boyle was a playoff rental. The Leafs haven't bought. A player that big, literally, at the deadline uh, since 2004, Mm -hmm. maybe even 2003 before that, because 2004 was kind of a lot of spare parts. Um, Like, we're talking Brian Leach. (laughs) Yeah. Back in the day. Ron Francis. Yeah, so Dominic Moore is not replacing Brian Boyle. Dominic Moore is replacing uh, Byron Frase and Peter Holland and Ben Smith and Freddie Goche. (laughs) That's who he's replacing. Look at those names and go, did the Leafs improve on that? Oh, okay, good. Brian Boyle, I mean, no, that was fake. Do the Capitals have to replace Kevin Shattenkirk? <laughs> no, they got to worry about replacing some other guys for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, Shattenkirk was purely a rental. So getting back to Patrick Marlowe, 
God, you know, that third year worries me a little bit. But again, the contract is movable. And the Leafs can spend money like drunken pirates for the next two seasons, in my opinion. Go, go look at their cap friendly page. Well, and I was they got th- some things to worry about, but in my opinion, they got a really interesting two year window. Well, it, it is because let's let's look at the contracts that come off the books starting at the end of the season. Can I show you something I learned about cap friendly? What's that? Before you start, uh-huh. so uh, <laughs> this shows you how like little I actually explore the site that I'm on every day. <laughs> click AAV. AAV. Okay, clicked it. Did you see the dollar amounts change for Matthews, Marner, and Nylander? Yes. Okay, so that oh. shows you their max bonuses. Oh, okay. Right, wow. which I think makes so much more sense. It does because you're looking at it. You're just looking at the nine twenty five for Matthews. Well, the mm. Leafs, the Leafs didn't go over five million dollars over the cap because Matthews made nine hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. They made it because he hit all of his bonuses. Right. So that's better right away. Okay. So here's what we're looking at. Yes. All right. Coming off the books next season, five point two five million dollars from Joffrey Lupo. Yes, four point two five from James Van Riemsdyk. So I believe that together is nine and a half million dollars right there. Yeah. Four point two from Tyler Bozak. So yes. that's now we're up to thirteen, thirteen something. Yeah, you can see the running total. Well, sorry, the final total at the bottom. So uh, Komarov, another three million dollars. So now we're to sixteen million. Eric Fair. Off the books, two million dollars. So that eighteen million. Dominic Moore, one million. <laughs> one million. So nineteen. So we get nine. We have nineteen million dollars. That's just poof. And those are forwards. They're all forwards, and that's the key thing. And what's what? What else is really important about most of those players, barring one? Most of those players, but they're all wingers. Oh, mm. okay. And what are the Leafs really deep at? Wing, wing. Now I'm not yeah. saying you could just go replace JVR. <laughs> But that's the one thing I'm a little worried about. When you look at uh, Joffrey Lupo's eh. contract, people are like, things. "Well, how are we going to pay? How are we going to pay for William Nylander?" Well, I would give you Joffrey Joffrey Lupo and Eric Fair. Well, okay, you're so you're trading those two for William Nylander's next contract. Lupo goes on the LTIR, so he was on there this past season. So you need a little bit more than him. Here's what I learned about the LTIR, and maybe people have told us this before, and maybe I should have known it before, but uh, and, and and I'm willing to bet Tom uh, Prohashka told us this, uh, the artist formerly known as General Fanger, who now <laughs> works for the Vegas Golden Knights. LTIR, like players on LTIR, like Lupul and Horton, they don't come off the cap. They are added to the cap. Yes. Yeah. So I didn't know that. Um because I, I, I don't know. I'm ignorant. Um, ignorant. Yeah. So you add, like, I think it's like $10.5 million to the cap with those two. So you're allowed to spend to that. That's what makes it different. Um, there's a lot of fat on this Leafs roster for this season. So I think they're. I think at some point, I don't know what their plans are trade-wise, but if they're able to finagle a couple moves, they could really slam some cupboards in the in the Eastern Conference. Eric Fair, two million two million bucks. If you're able to get rid of that somehow, I still think Vegas is an option. Well, why wouldn't you call if Carolina is willing to take Kruger for one point eight? Yeah, and for a fifth, could you throw a fourth at somebody and say, "Here's Eric Fair," who, by the way, I mean, he was still pretty useful with the Leafs. In one game. In the one game. He looked good. <laughs> Most though. of one game. No, he did. He did. I'm not going to deny that. But maybe it was a good two million game. bucks. <laughs> you know, Small sample size. Very. <laughs> M- Marinson is a little, well, I'm okay with keeping him. Um, Marchenko is never going to see the light of day on the Leafs roster unless there's oh, yeah, by the way, a m- bunch of injuries. Marchenko, Marinson, and Carrick are all up next year as well. Yeah. Carrick, I want to resign for sure. Of course. Marinson, I talk to and see what his price is. Marchenko at 1.4, no. Well, I wonder with Marinson, um, what would be the... I think this year is kind of like a show me. Like, if you're a legitimate player, if you're if you're whatever you're going to be, this is the year to show me. Because last year was a real I can't imagine him year. getting much of a raise. No. In fact, like, especially he... after uh, what I assume this season is going to be where he's like an extra guy. He's at 1.25. I think he might not. He wouldn't get the money here anymore. Yeah. There's there's a lot of fat, but I think there's enough wiggle room there to get at least two of JVR 
uh, Bozak and Komarov signed and extend Nylander and pay him six, seven million bucks. Because I think that's what he's going to end up getting. You want to you extend Bozak and yeah, JVR? <laughs> JVR would be nice. I don't think... Uh, I'm very torn on JVR. He's an extremely good player, makes the Leafs better. They signed Marlowe, so clearly they're trying to win, right? However, you do got to explore the possibility of training him, uh, trading him because you might lose him. I would like to get him for six, which means he's probably going to go for seven. Um, maybe you got to trade him, but you're trying to win now. Here's here's what I would say with JBR. Um, you play with him this year. A lot of people just and if you look up the left side, the Leafs are actually a little bit thinner than than most people really b- think, right? There's not the the same. Oh, you're left talking wing. About Hyman, uh, JBR, uh, Komarov, and is it Matt Martin? Matt Martin. But now add Marlowe to it. Add Marlowe. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. So. You know, I, I want to look why, like they just strengthen that position so much, and that's why it's that's why it's a good thing. Um, I don't think that like they obviously care enough to keep Josh Levo around that they have some sort of future for him in mind. I think. Then you've got Connor Brown and Zach Hyman who have yet to be signed. There are RFA's. You can wait and wait and wait wait and wait. Um, but I was looking at this lineup and thinking, and I love Connor Brown, but there's something's got to give here. And I don't Mike, think it's him. Mike, well, Mike Babcock said to the Toronto Star yesterday, or I guess it would have been, you know, a press conference that they they all go in and like a conference Maybe, call yeah. or something like that. There, but what he did so say, much. he's like, obviously, we. Oh, I forget the exact quote. Give me, like, give me a second. I have it written down here. Sure. Gonna, I want to read the exact quote because I think it's quite telling. Well, because okay, if they're going to trade JVR and Bozak, do it now. So Do it in the summer. So here's the, Babcock That's the only time you up, really have. Babcock brought up Tyler Bozak, Nazem Kadri, James Van Riemsdyk, and Leo Komarov. The real good players. And the and two of them, or any way you look at it, we can't have them all on the team as we move ahead. It doesn't work like that. We have to figure out a way when you have opportunities to do uh, what you can. That's pretty interesting. And we know they've already tried to move JVR. Now, do we know that for sure that the Islanders were really... We know that. Okay. So that's a confirmed thing? Yeah, we know that. Okay. Because um, I've heard it disputed, I guess, but... when no, I look we, at th- we know that. Uh, I think... If, I uh, My understanding is potentially it's not a for sure thing, but it's p- possible that Travis Hamannick is not a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs because of JVR. <laughs> possible. Possible, maybe. Well, that's his prerogative. He earned it. Now, I, I, I don't hate it. Let me Whatever. let me throw something out there that I that I'm sure will not be totally well received, but I don't care. Mm-hmm. This is how I look at this. Um, the Leafs don't have to make a trade at all. The Leafs are a good I have team. Two, I have two thought processes here. Yeah, two, I, and I think I'm of two minds as well. Because okay. I hate seeing what happened to Frankie Corrado, which nobody cared about. Josh Levo, it happened to him too. <laughs> uh, but. I, I hate seeing that happen, but that's pro sports, man. That's pro sports. Like, the Raptors, when they get to the playoffs, they shorten up the bench. There's like eight guys that see the court. The rest of them just sit there in their track pants and, and root along. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that's just what it is. You're paid to be there. If you're not good enough to be in the lineup, you're not in the lineup. Period. End of story. Now, if, if you look at the depth on this team, it does push a guy like Kasp- you, you wonder where Kasperi Kapanen's going to fit in well he's the easiest one to send down can now can you do issue? that without clearing wa- waivers yeah okay so that he might he might start with the Marlies there's just and the other guy you got to look at who I believe is waivers exempt is Sosh uh, you're going to have to shove him on, on the Marlies and how much is he going to love that I can't imagine very much Eric Fair is a huge question mark because um, again I think he can play two but two million bucks you can't be he can't be sitting in the press box if he's making two two million bucks. So you look at the Leafs cap friendly right now. Um, Eric Fair is a big decision they got to make, and Alexi Marchenko is a big decision they got to make. Marchenko seems more obvious to me than Fair. He's going to get buried on the Marlies. Mm-hmm. So you save yourself seven hundred and something or nine? Uh, was it nine something? Quite a bit. Enough. Most I, of it. I think if you bury both, you get pretty close to the Leafs are over the cap. Mm-hmm. They'll end up under the cap because of LTR and blah, 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 blah. But I think if you bury both of them, you get right there. There was a signing whenever you guys are ready for it. Oh, uh, For who? Let's hear it. Let's, we're uh, ready. The Colorado Avalanche signed okay. 
Mal Yakupov. Oh, hey. a one-year contract of eight hundred and seventy-five grand. Hey, man, good bet. Why not? <laughs> good bet. Why not? And, and you, you know, know what? He, that's that's a good bet for Nail too. Good. He'll get ice time. He'll get ice time if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna revive your career. Why not do it at a place that's gonna play you? And if they don't play you, shit, <laughs> maybe you're done. <laughs> Really well. Yeah, it's true, right? Absolutely. I think he's got the skills. I just don't think he's ever had the. So that brings them up to thirty-two contracts, I believe. Still the lowest in the league. Wow. I checked this. Morning. So well, you look at the Leafs, though. Um, they don't have to make a move. They could. Ha- they could sit these guys, and if they lose, and forgive me on this one, if they lost JVR for nothing, and they lost Tyler Bozak for nothing, and they had a good play ro- playoff run out of it, I'm okay with that. No, I'm not. But you lose them for cap room. It's not nothing. Yeah. It's something. I am okay with it yeah, because yeah. if, Steve, Overspend. if there's no deal to be had that's fair value, yeah. why weaken your team this year? And we go to the second round, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. Why weaken your team this year just so you can get some sort of asset back? If you're in win yeah. now mode, you're in win now mode. Well, okay. So I'm. Let me throw something out there. Whichever model they go with, which is the we don't have to do anything model. Or the we need to shed some guys and jiggle the team around a little bit. Mm-hmm. The Leafs will be one of the top five Stanley Cup contenders in two years' time. Why do you say that? I just think they're going to win the Cup, man, in two years. That's, that's, just that's their year to go for it. Like balls to the wall, go for it. And then they'll they'll still be fine, but they're going to have to extend Why Matthews. Two years? Because that's when, after that, is when you have to extend Matthews and Marner. You'll still be good, mm-hmm. probably still even a playoff team, but you're going to have to tinker. You're sure. going to have to figure it out a little bit. So that'll be Matthews, Marner, and the year before you extended Nylander. Right. And you got and a Gardner, lot of long-term Gardner contracts. Gardner's going to be up to, you see what I'm probably saying, Probably going to lose right? Gardner that year. I don't know about that, but we'll see. We'll see. Why can't we win next year? What is I, 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 I think, know. No, I, honestly, I, know. I think I think they'll be one of the better teams next year, and I I think a first round exit would be disappointing next year. Um, but I just think the year after <laughs> they'll be even because better. there'll be nineteen million dollars just free money, right? Tim Gleason and Jared Cowan oh, are two point one million dollars of dead cap that everyone forgets about, right? Due to buyouts, so it's twenty yeah. million dollars basically that comes off the cap. There's a lot. There is a lot. Now, the other thing I was thinking about, because I was trying to make my cup winner for two years from now, I was, I was I, seriously, I, I had my marker board out. It was like, how do I make this team? Also, the best team never wins the cup. Right. <laughs> right. That's, that's why you the, want That's death. why they're, they're going to build the third best. That's why you don't trade Bozak. <laughs> you know what? The best team rarely wins the cup, but the Penguins were the second best team. Well, tell that to the Capitals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, anyway. Yeah, they beat the best team because the best <laughs> team never wins. See, it was a great strategy. Yeah. They got all those injuries because they decided they were doing too well. So we need to suck just a little bit <laughs> more. Little bit. Yeah, that's what Matt Martin's for. Just be a little oh, less good why, than the Lightning. Yeah, why is he on a four-year deal? <laughs> Think, idiots. Well, we can't be that <laughs> good. <laughs> and there's another option, by the way, is the Leafs are going to have to shit or get off the pot with Matt Martin. They're going to have to make that decision pretty quick. I don't know how you move move that deal. I mean, either, they but to. they're mm, two million, two and a half million dollars. It's a for lot. A fourth line left winger. It is a lot. It's not very good. Um, I honestly, I I look at this lineup and I go, this is a good, this is a good deep lineup. They have nothing at center. They have nothing. They have what, a few. What yeah, do sir. you do? What do you do without Bozak in the lineup? So you could trade JVR, and and there are repl- players that could come in. That will not do the same job. You'll have a hard time finding 27 goals out of the next guy. You're going to have to sign Bozak's replacement. I don't think you have it with him. Unless, Unless Altonen is just unbelievable. Or Adam Brooks. <sighs> I don't know. Prairie Jesus. He can come in, play sheltered minutes, third line. Third line's not sheltered, though. That's that's the problem. Sheltered-ish. Sheltered-ish. This is like, again, you look at, okay, you go Matthews, Kadri. Who's your power play? Who's your penalty kill? And then third, fourth line. That's what Moore's there for. He's there to just kill barely play even strength and kill penalties. Win face offs in the defensive zone. Yes. He's there. Dominic Moore was signed to be Dominic Moore. And he's pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, the other option, you trade JVR and or Bozak this summer to get value for them. Resign Komarov because he is too important to your leadership group and penalty kill. 
and even strengthen your shutdown line. Um, and you introduce rookies now. You introduce their replacements now. So who's the centerman? In. The centerman, I don't know. The left winger could be a variety of guys. Uh, Carl Grundstrom would be a guy I wouldn't have much of a problem given that. Uh, right that, now? Uh, you, well, this is the thing. Like, do you not want to see start you, now? I see. What I see now is that they go okay. What what Lou Lamorello does is when he's got time, he's, his thing is when you've got time, you take the time, and they have time. Mm-hmm. What they could do is wait till October and see what they have, and then make a move. Then that is another option. That's another option because, for sure. Because if you have the time, if you can get 20, 30, 40, 50 games out of Bozak and JVR and then get value for them because you know what, you have a guy with the Marlies that you're not rushing, that you're not throwing a whole bunch of pressure on because they've adjusted to the North American game for the Swedes that are coming over, or they've just got, you know, they got to the point like Kapanen where it's like, we're wasting this guy. We need him in the lineup. So yeah. not wait till October, wait till March. Well, wait till, yeah, you could wait till February, March, but I guarantee have you. a lot of, they, they have gonna, a few different moments to make their move. It's pretty interesting. Well, I mean, look at, look at a team like Montreal. Okay. And we'll get to them in a second. Sure. Look at what a, a mess that seems to be right now and how they need scoring up front with Boy. Radulov gone. No, they're fine. They got a Hemsky. <laughs> they replaced 31 <laughs> goals with four goals. Yo, did he have four goals? Four goals and three assists last year. Oh, wow. Okay. So you find a team like that and you go, hey, we got this guy on an expiring deal. What can we do? Now, I'm not saying Montreal has anything to offer the Leafs, but you you wait until a team is really starting to go, wow, we can't score any goals. Maybe you don't trade to a divisional rival. rival. Maybe you trade to the West. This is why that whole Demers thing, I'm like, I don't know. Um Scroll down a little bit, okay? Because there are two guys who I think could be a very cheap option for the Leafs, and you need cheap young talent to win the cup, as so, the Penguin showed. Uh, who do you like? Uh, Callie Rosen, I like, but we'll have to see what he is. So you have AAV clicked, right? Mm-hmm. So what's his cap hit? Uh, one seven seven five. If he if he hits his bonuses, have a look at Travis Dermott. Wow. If, whether he hits his bonuses or not, he's eight sixty three. Travis Dermott does not have any bonuses. How did he man? How did they manage that? He's a second round pick. Mm-hmm. Oh. Travis Dermott doesn't have any bonuses. You didn't have to give him anything because he was a first rounder. You didn't have to give him any fancy. Hey, please come to North America, Europe money. Neither does Andreas Johnson or Jeremy Brack Daddy Bracco. Bracco's yeah. Bracco's got like less than a hundred thousand dollars in bonuses. So there are options there. I don't know if Bracco's that option. Andreas Johnson is intriguing to me, but the two on the back end there as potential cheap third pairing guys. And let's not also forget, not this upcoming season, but the one after, Timothy Lilligren becomes an option. Mm -hmm. I think they're in a really unique window. I still think they are only a few sides of a Rubik's Cube. They, which... See, I think I just answered my own question. In in order to complete the Rubik's cube, you got to ruin a couple parts. Yeah, JVR and Bozak are getting moved. You think they're gonna? They, I this don't know. Summer? I don't think they're getting traded this summer. And I actually, I again, I would not be upset to see them go. Given a crazy, because remember, this is their contract year. Give the Leafs a crazy ah. eighty-two games, and then a crazy playoff. Because what happens in the playoffs really affects what happens to you on July first. Like we saw that with Shattenkirk, right? Yep. We saw that he had a rough playoffs, and people were like, well, we're not as hot on him as we were at the trade deadline. And I think if you if you have guys like that playing for money, and JVR needs to cash in now, this is the time. I think, I think, hang on to those guys, let them go, because you've got tons and tons of options in the minors. And as Jesse mm-hmm. said, you're not losing just for nothing anymore. You're, lo- you're losing cap space. I agree, you're getting cap space, but... Oh, you're getting cap space, sorry. I don't think... Uh... Again, like in free agency, you just have to spend too much. Joe Thornton got eight million dollars. Yeah, uh, we need to talk about that eventually. I want to get. Into I that. wanted him, but what? Not the for eight million. Hell, like, are you kidding me? It's are like they gave kidding? him Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe's deal together. Honestly, like Joe, we'll just give you Marlowe's money. And... Like that's just not a good way to spend your money. <laughs> I don't think that's crazy. But, so this is one. Yeah, JVR and Bozak come off the books, and that's going to cost about eight point five million. Another half million, you're Joe Thornton. I don't know, man. And his numbers are ridiculous, but anyway. 
But, um, but he did take a, his production took a bit of a dive last season. Yeah, but supposedly Dreger um, mentioned the potential of the Leafs maybe sending one of one or both of JVR and Bozak to Nashville, which is an interesting prospect for sense. me because I can't imagine they they got Emelin and paying Emelin that kind of money, even at salary retained, to be on their third pair. So what do you, what would the deal look like? I have no idea. And it, well, it would have to be one of their big four. It's definitely not going to be Subban. Yossi? It could be Yossi. Because it was, I was wrong. Ekholm would be the guy I'd attack. Of, but, well, of course, but what are they going to want to give up Ekholm? Ellis would be wonderful. Mm-hmm. But he likes, he likes, he's quiet. He likes the the quiet. Yeah. It's a quiet guy. Yeah. Did, wait. I mean, Matthews is Did Dreger say too. that, or did he say it was rumored? I just read it. I read it on Twitter, which means Dreger might have been eating cornflakes all morning and actually said nothing, and someone was lying. But Okay. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, hey, man, either way, they make a move. I'm pretty sure that it'll be great. Uh, and if they don't make a move on that front, then I'm still great with that, because Bozak is your third-line center, and he's a pretty damn good third-line center. I'm happy with that for, for another year. So Don't sleep on the Leafs. Don't sleep on the leaf. Hainsey, Stay tuned. Hainsey, two years, six million bucks, um, overpaid. But what does he bring? What does he bring? And what are they? They first off, we know he's a left shot, but he can play the right side, and in fact, did with Pittsburgh. Yes. Why do they like him? Uh, here we go. Sorry, just oh, okay. to just to read what I said. This is from Bobby Cappuccino, and he linked to something from FanRag Sports. Uh, kind of disjointed, but it seems like Dreger speculates he could see Bozak or JVR to Nashville. So. Or both. I'm sure there's more. Well, Nashville's going to have a problem this summer with Johansson. Johansson wants $8.5 million. He's on drugs. He is. Uh, but he to Nashville, wants... he's worth that. There's a. This has been a weird summer in that I, I don't think I've seen this many players completely just like hold their team off of a cliff. Montreal? Like, that's a, that's a full-on mutiny. Like, because Radulov had all the, um, all the bargaining chips— Markov had all the bargaining chips, which he's losing a couple, but he still has them. And then as a result, if I'm Alex Galchenyuk, I'm going, <laughs> idiots, pay me. Pay me or trade me. Let me out of this hellhole. The, I don't care. The Leafs have some money. Would a Markov be a guy that you would say, meh? No. No. Well, I get the two years thing. Oh, he well. wants He wants two. No, they literally can't afford him. That's That's... I want them to spend money like drunken pirates a little bit, but that's... And that's also a lot of old legs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's too much. Um, that's too much. Uh, Ron Hainsey, speaking of old Ron legs. Hainsey. Um, 36 years old. Yeah, he uh, played really high on the Penguins last season during the during the cup run. Played more playoff games for them than regular season games. Crazy. I, I don't even remember who he got traded from. And from what I understand, fans are going to hate his game, but that's just because he is like quintessential stay-at-home guy. Will he win? I won't. I won't hate any player's game who helps my team win. Well, and I was going to ask about that because okay, yes, okay. We again yeah. overpaid. Fine. You know um, how much I would love the trap if I was a Devils fan. I'd be like, Woo, <laughs> who cares? That's <laughs> how you win championships. Defense if I was an Ottawa fan, I would be the same thing. Yeah, and they embraced it. Like I would just be like, yeah, we're boring. Woo! Yeah, there is no such thing uh, as a boring winning team if you're a fan of them. Yeah, because what they really are is frustrating. Yes. Um, but I look at the Leafs' defense now. We got Riley Zaitsev, probably. Maybe. Yep. Gardner Hainsey. That's what people are saying. Just throwing this out there. No, I know. But let's say, and I know Zaitsev, and, apparently Zaitsev and Gardner's numbers were better together than Riley and, and Zaitsev. Yeah, I think what happened was Riley Zaitsev, they finally put that pairing together, and then kind of towards the end of the season, they just started getting filled in and there was nothing they could do right. So they changed it up to... Gardner Zaitsev? Gardner Zaitsev, and I don't remember who Riley's partner was. I think it was... It wasn't Carrick, because I think Carrick. he was hurt for a bit too. It might have been Morenson for a bit. Yeah. I don't remember. So here's here's what I like. If if you're Morgan Riley... Okay, so Ron Hainsey has played against top teams and top minutes because he had to, right? Yeah. And, and he did it in the playoffs. Yeah, Myrtle, Mor- Myrtle wrote about that. It was really good. If you're in Morgan, If you're Morgan Riley... And you have a guy like Ron Hainsey. It allows you to be a little bit more like R- Morgan Riley. If you are Jake Gardner and you've got a guy like sorry uh, Ron Hainsey, it allows you to be a little bit more Jake Gardner, right? I want and yeah, and I think that helps unleash Connor Carrick a bit. I, I always Boom. I'm always tooting his horn. I just there's more to give there. I've seen it. There's more to give there. He I think we saw be, flashes of it last year. We saw f- offensive though. 
He's got way more to give offensively. He can't be Gardner's or Riley's defensive stalwart. I, don't, I just don't think that's what he is. But what he's if you feisty, have him? He's feisty, but he's not big enough. Like, but he's got that shot. He can pass the puck. He knows what to do offensively. I, I know Leaf fans who hadn't seen him before he uh, before last season, really, are like, what the hell are you talking about? Anyone who saw that Calder Cup run, I I have just such a hard time believing that's it. There's more to give there. And I didn't think he looked that out of place. I think he got injured. He did. He got injured. I think he's going to come back and be a firecracker. I so, think he's going to be great. And here's how I, I look at it. So it's Unless either, he gets straight. So it's what, either, are your, what are your line comments? It's going to be Hainsy Gardner. We're kind of working through it. Yeah. yeah. Hainsy Gardner or Hainsy Riley. Whichever it is, Zaitsev's with the other one, right? Okay. So Hainsy's right side. I'd prefer Gardner, I think. Hainsy Gardner? I okay, so for, for argument's sake today. Pairing one. Riley Zaitsev. Yes. Riley Zaitsev. Gardner Hainsy. Yes. And it doesn't matter. You can use those two. Inter- and then you got a guy like Travis Dermott, who I fully expect to make uh, make the team this year. I um, think so. And, it, and if he doesn't make the team, that's his fault. And Connor Carrick. And what I like about those two is you can shelter their minutes a little bit. And they are both fast. They are both offensively minded. Carrick um, and Dermott? Sorry, Carrick and Dermott is what I mean. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Carrick and Dermott are... Offensively minded, um, and you could shelter those minutes. You know, those guys, I mean, the other, the top four would be playing each of them probably 18, 19 minutes a night, right? Yeah, and if you need to protect Hainsey at five on five a little bit just to keep his minutes down and save him for the penalty kill, then Carrick can move up. What happens to Dermot? Well, you just don't play him as much. And because then he's Marinson and Marchenko are the guys up. Ugh, God. I just... Ugh, that's too much money to just be sitting yeah. there. And if fair is the other extra too, blah. Then now you're talking about close to four million bucks just but if we're talking in the press box. Purely on skill? Yeah. Mm. And you know what? The Leafs don't give a shit. Oh, I think they do give a shit. I don't think they care. No, that look much. what they did. Well, to this season Steve. this season, you're right. Yeah. I don't think they care. <laughs> no. I don't think the Leafs are going, oh man, we have to write all this money to them, write off all this money to these guys. And somebody's gonna be injured. We are not going to have a season like no. we did last year where yeah, nobody got injured. Right. <laughs> somebody will be injured. On, somebody on yeah. defense, somebody on forward. It'll be crushing. We'll, we'll see, be hurt. Actually, our roster's too big now because they're not going to send Levo down and lose him to waivers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wonder if Levo makes this team just because that's the most practical thing. Like, he's the fourth line right winger. You can send Sosh down. You can send Kapanen down. You can send I'd like fair. to see him play. It'd be great. Yeah, but like what I'm saying is, if Kapanen makes the team, then what the hell happens with Levo? Because you have to send at least. No, you can't because you can only have three spares, right? Yeah, and you can also Uh, wave Marchenko. Yeah, why can't we just wave Marchenko? This is what I'm saying. I think that's what you do. Yeah, I think that's the move. And then if if nobody takes him, then you bury him, and you're only responsible for what 500 grand on the cap. Or you see what he could do. Maybe he's better. Maybe he's better starting the season with the Leafs than he is just blindly coming in. Vegas wouldn't want him. Delphi. No, they already have too many. I believe yeah. me, I've considered but that. But somebody <laughs> is going to be injured at some point, and, yeah. and around the league too. So this yeah. is kind of this is kind of where it gets cool because I think you you have Marinson and Marchenko, and they're your seven eight. Mm-hmm. But you've got these two kids, Carrick and Dermot, and I really like the fact that those two will be able to be sheltered a little bit. Carrick's got a little bit more experience, and I think with a you know a healthy summer, good workout routine, yeah. understands the system a little bit older. Wild card gonna, of Rosen. Yep. Yep, Rosen could could do it too. I mean, I I give I give those Swedish guys if they if they come in and they look a, even a little bit off, give them half a season with the Marlies just to adjust. Why throw them? Why just throw them at the at the fire? Once again, once again, here we are talking our way through what the hell the Leafs are doing. But now it's exciting. Yes, because I think they're closer. They're ah the Megazord. They're making the Megazord. They got like two legs. And the body, and we're looking for like a left arm. That's all we're looking for. And then they'll have a Megazord ready I, to go after all of Rita Repulse's evildoers. So I have a question. Yes. When, like, Mike Babcock and Lou Lamorello have been very, very high on their signings, Rosen, Altonen, and Borgman. They keep mentioning them. They eh? keep talking about them like they're Lou really did excited. that, I noticed. And, and, like, I've never seen Matt, Mike Babcock gush about a player that's never played for him. You know what I mean? Hmm. Not like this. He's never played. In the, these guys have never played in the NHL, and yet he's really excited about it. Why? You think some of that's ego? Is it? Is you it guys e- have no idea. I'm about to dunk on you with this Finnish kid. Well, he's pretty sick. Be cool if he does. Please, I hope it happens. Babcock does have an ego. 
I think everybody, everybody. If you ask Mike Commodore, that's definitely what Mike Commodore. Oh, and I think Mike Commodore's got a healthy ego himself. Uh, you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure Mike. Yeah. Pretty sure to play at that level and be at that level in any position, you got a bit of an ego. You got it. You see his ridiculous text to Justin Williams? No, I didn't see it. What did he say? I don't know. I just think my Commodore needs to pack his shit. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, I'm, I'm really excited about where this goes, but I really think I'm looking forward to Dermot playing a little bit. Uh, and and Carrick getting another full season. I think he's good. I, I'm with you, man. I think there's something there. There's more there. And with Rosen and Borgman on the left side, Dermot's in tough, man. Supposedly, uh, Bor- uh, Rosen is another guy left-handed can play the right. So I, they're up to something. They're up to something, and I think the something is JVR. <laughs> okay, so you think JVR gets traded before the summer's up? I, fifty-fifty, fifty-fifty. All right, Jesse, what do you think? JVR will be a leaf on November first. So there that's, you go. That's the magic. It's just if you can get prediction. JVR for some magical, mystical right-handed defenseman, which everyone seems to think is going to happen, then what did you sign Hainsey for? It's my question. He's an option. I guess you can put him on the left again. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited to find out. Um, all right, Montreal has got to be the most interesting team this offseason, and starting with Carl Alsner. I was close. Yeah. He almost got 5 over 5. Wow. Uh, 5.6 something. Or sorry, 4.6 over 5 years each year. I think it was 4.625. Woo! That's just bad. I believe it was Ray Ferraro that said, I don't see an NHL defenseman, or I don't see a defenseman for today's NHL, is what he said. And how about Russian Machine Never Breaks? who they love the Washington Capitals. Again, they're one of my favorite team-specific blogs uh, out there. And they love their team. They're frustrated with their team right now, but uh, for months now, like even before the season was even over, they're like, what's going on with this Olsner guy? Who the hell is going to give him all that money? Montreal. Montreal. Ugh. Now with Radulov leaving and Carey Price's extension kicking in next season. Oh my God! Sorry, ten, not ten this coming 5. season, but the next season. Because we'll, he's not a free agent. We'll work on it. His yeah, deal isn't yeah, up yet. It's, still... um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's like Ryan Kessler uh, a couple years ago. That's right. He, he had a full season to earn <laughs> to <laughs> that earn... six point eight that he already earned. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Carey Price will make ten and a half million dollars. No doubt that Carey Price is worth it, but what will the Montreal Canadiens look like on defense come October 1st this year? I just, I I don't look at that deal as bad for Montreal. I look at that deal as bad for Carey Price. I what, agree. Uh, why? Well, you don't think he's getting the money he deserves? No, I do. If anything, he's worth more than that to them. But what, Carey, like, look at them. This is your best chance to win? <sighs> Maybe. Maybe he looks and goes, hey, any team that I'm on is automatically a contender. And he's right. And he's right. He's <laughs> so, right. Um, but when you've got, okay, so you're you're not, sure, you've, you've lost Yemlin. Mm-hmm. You've lost Boileau. Mm-hmm. You lost have. Lost Radulov. You've lost, well, hold on. I'm, I'm just starting with the defense. Evelyn, sure. Boileau, haven't re-signed Markov yet. And you have Carl Alsner and Jeff Petrie. Yeah. Who, who else is playing defense in front of you? Mm, Shea Weber. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And he's there forever as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, Schlemko. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Forgot okay. about David that's Schlemko. Not bad. Yeah. It's funny. You know what I'm reading a lot this morning? And, it, and you know, Leaf fans do their own mental gymnastics like we're doing with Patrick Marlowe. Yes, they overpaid, but like we are looking at it with. We're Ro- being optimistic. Yeah, we're being very sure. optimistic. My new favorite is well, Radulov uh, and Druan are basically a wash. That's not the point. The point was to get Radulov and Drew in. That's well, why you bring in Drew in. It's also, well, losing <laughs> Radulov didn't cost you Sergachev. <laughs> exactly. He was supposed to be on your team next year. You're Okay, I like David Schlemko, but he's basically your... Sergachev. Sergachev replacement. Right? Or is it someone else? I just don't know. And Galchenyuk uh, hasn't re-signed yet. You, you guys know? haven't mentioned Jordy Ben. <laughs> oh yeah, Jordy Ben. Jordy. Is he? Uh, they resigned him. Well, yeah, they got was, him on a decent deal. I yeah, guess. one point one. That's a decent deal. Twenty nineteen. He's a third pairing guy. Jeez, that's less than Matt Hunwick last year. So it'll be Weber and Alsner. 
I guess, on the first line. And then uh, Petrie yeah. and I'm very, Carl. I'm very excited to play Montreal next year. Oh, just... Like, if you have any sort of speed to the outside... Oh. Like, that's the game where I'm like, okay, Kasperi Kapanen, go! <laughs> yeah, go. just send all your water bugs. Mm-hmm. And then your second line's Petrie and Schlemko. Call them the TTC turnstile every <laughs> night. And then your third pairing's Jordy. Ben and Davidson? Or Morrow, if they want to. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Davidson, Morrow. too. Yeah. So that's, no, that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. They got, they got a roster. That's what it is. Listen, okay. They're going to make the playoffs. They're going to make the playoffs. Yeah. I don't know. Carey Price, man. But here's the thing. So they so they sign uh, Alex Hemsky, which is a million dollars, and it's basically that's a wash. That's like a mm-hmm. okay. You're that's a, it's worth a shot. Yeah, I won't criticize him. For but that. he had it's four goals shot. and three assists last year on a high powered Dallas offense that kind of faltered a little bit. Yeah, um, he's always had good possession numbers. With Radulov of gone, what do you do now? Where do you get 18 goals? Where do you get 36 assists from? You can't replace it in free agency because it's not out there. I think they finally go to the minors. They finally Houdon. go Houdon. Mm. And after that, I'm not sure. McCarron? Mm-hmm. Who's the highest paid forward on Montreal? Placanic. Oh, six Thomas million. Placanic, yeah, six million bucks. And he had a bad <laughs> year. That's true. That's a rough deal. Yeah. But but maybe he rebounds. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to be optimistic <laughs> for Montreal. <laughs> I don't know. I d- that's just it reeks of mediocrity to me, outside of Carey Price and Max Pacioretty, the perennially underrated Max Pacioretty. I'm just I don't know. I'm just not impressed. I'm not impressed. There's talent there. There's, There's real talent sure. there. Uh, and Gallagher will probably have a better season than he did last year. I don't know. I'm just not that impressed. I'm not that impressed. I. How afraid should I be that the Leafs are in the Atlantic? What do we got? We got Ottawa, Montreal, Ottawa, Boston, Tampa. I'm skeptical. Yeah, well, okay. Tampa at the top. Scared. Scared of Tampa. And then I think I put the Leafs like second. I worry about Florida. Nah. I worry about the Panthers. You don't worry about the Panthers? Uh, the Panthers need to worry about putting their shirt on the right way, the, the way things are going. I don't know what... I don't understand what was what's the happening. Yuki thing. I don't. I don't get why they got rid of him. I don't. I don't. Understand. And I don't get why nobody signed him. Has anybody signed him? It's uh, like they, it, 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 they, honestly, they were the computer boys for all of one year, and then they went nuts to this. Season. Yeah, nuts to all this. And they're still trying to unload Demers, who is a, uh, I mean, he's a pretty good right-handed defenseman. Are they? That's what I understand. I don't, they have budget concerns. They're trying to cut. I don't understand. And Dadnoff resigned there because he played there again. I think he played in yeah, 2010 re- or 2011. Resigned. Yeah, he signed yeah. there. So they might have something there. Maybe. Um, but don't I forget the Senators. Yeah, and and I'm not convinced they can do it again. When okay, with Ottawa, were there numbers were there advanced numbers supporting what they were doing? Like Maybe. did they have inflated shot percentages? Did they have in, like, you know, were they Oh, I can't remember. Cuz I'd like to know cuz I I'm not convinced with Ottawa either, but then I wasn't convinced this season and they made it all the way to the basically conference outside final. of yeah. Carlson, they're tremendously mediocre. Right. But they have Carlson. Yeah. Like, this is kind of what we said away. about Montreal. Yeah. Like, yeah, are they great outside of Price? No. But they got but Carey they Price, so... So they're going to be decent. Yeah. Unless something changes where the Sens don't have Carlson or the Habs don't have Price. I don't know. I just... I look at the Leafs and I think they're better than Montreal right now. I think they're better than Ottawa right now. They're certainly better than Detroit. I still think they're better than Buffalo. I think they're better than Boston. They're gonna have there, to prove there they are. They're at least second. <laughs> They're going to have to earn better than Boston. Yeah. Because Bergeron and Marchand have something to say about that. And Bacchus. Yeah, and who else? And... Oh, Bacchus. Nah. <laughs> nah. Not scared. All right. And not Tuka. scared. And Tuka. And Tuka. Uh, we're going to run through the rest of the teams now. Sure. And just kind of pick their, their notable signings. So we'll start with Anaheim. Yep. Uh, the most notable is Ryan Miller. Two years, two million each. 36 years old. Bad year in Vancouver because Vancouver was bad. Good bet. But pretty pretty solid bet. Good bet. Good bet. Uh, he's. I don't think he's a downgrade on Bernier, mm-hmm. and he's making half as much. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. At what point are they going to finally fully trust John Gibson? Is that ever going to happen? Well, I wonder if they're they're like okay, John Gibson. We know is going to play fifty games this year, but we need somebody who's going to play thirty. Yeah. 
Like that's the thing with with Curtis McElhaney that with no offense to him, I'm still I'm, worried. About I'm a little that. worried about the backup situation. And maybe maybe this is uh, what's his face. Um, um, Garrett Sparks' time. Garrett Sparks' his time. Spark- bah, 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 bah. Well, I want, which is a shame because we just gave McElhaney two years. Whatever though, you can you can bury that or buy it out. Sparks, I want I want to see be able to come in and play 25, 30 games. I need we need somebody who can. I just the way I look at McElhaney and Sparks' contracts, I think that's the plan. Like next, <laughs> within the not next this year. upcoming season, but the season after is when Sparks is the Leafs' backup goalie. Maybe the Arizona Coyotes made most of their moves in trades. Uh, Chalmerson, Stepan, um, Ranta, Ranta, uh, but they did sign Adam Clendenning, uh, who played 31 games last year. He's only going to cost him uh, $650,000. Is and he Nick, from the Rangers? Uh, yes. And I Nick, feel like there's two Clendennings and one of them's bad. I don't remember which is which. Uh, they also signed Nick Cousins and Zach Ronaldo. And they signed Zach Ronaldo? They did. <laughs> and Leafs defenseman Andrew Campbell is in Arizona now. That's right. Yes, they stole him back. The Leafs right. stole him from them, and they stole him back. Okay. Boston didn't really make huge moves, really any at all. They got Jordan Schwartz, Paul Potsma, and Kenny Augustino, so those are just young guys. Mm. Uh, Buffalo. Again, not too, too much happening here. Uh, and it's I think it's because they really didn't have much room to do anything, but they went and got Benoit Pouliot, which was interesting. Uh, oh, yeah, what's what's the dollars and cents? One year, $1.15 million. Good bet. Good bet. Good Seth bet. Griffith. Fine bet. I just, he's one of those tweeners. <laughs> Chad Johnson, who will back up Robin Lehner. Uh, interestingly, $2.5 million for Chad Johnson. He had a good season last year. I think he earned it. Yeah, there you go. I think he earned it. Um, and and his save I mean, that, that to me. Yeah, but that to me suggests they might be pulling on the reins there a little bit for Robin Lehner. Uh, Luke Gazdick signed with Calgary. On July the second, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> and yeah. a guy named Merrick Hervik uh, from Rangers signed with with Calgary. And that oh, was Hervik, Hervik or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Michael Stone obviously resigned. Versteeg resigned. What Stones did, dollars? Uh, Michael Stones uh, making three point five a year over three years. God, yeah, it's too much. They do have a big defensive core there. They do. Oh, like I mean, he'll look fine. You can shelter him as much as you want. Fine, just fine. He'll look fine, but like, God, you're paying a lot of money for a guy who's definitely a third pairing guy on your team. Right. Calgary made most of their moves, though, in trades beforehand, so we didn't expect them to do much. They yeah. kind of tinkered before. Uh, Carolina. Interesting because I think they're going to be one of those teams that rises, and they brought back Justin Williams. So they obviously think that there's something happening here. You think wild card this year for them? Definitely. That division's Definitely. too good for them to make one of the top three spots, I think. But they're well, on their what's Washington going to look up. like? What's New York going to look like? Uh, Isabel Kershudian. Kir- ah, hey, got it. Uh, she made a Caps team on Cap Friendly, and I'll try to pull that up. But I thought it was pretty good, and it gave a. It's a playoff team. It's. I think it's. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's a playoff <laughs> team too. But anyway, sorry. Go through Carolina there. Uh, Carolina that was basically it. I oh. mean, there was a bunch of young guys, but uh, pa- uh, sorry, Justin Williams was the guy that really kind of stood out. Two years, oh, four point five each mil- each year. Not bad. A uh, guy that's played there before, won the Stanley Cup there, and can teach the young kids probably how to win and can still contribute. Like, he's still a 20-goal, at least 45-point guy. Who's this again? Justin Williams. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just sure. asked me about him. Sorry, no, I know. I was, I, was, uh, I, know I, was, I was too busy looking at the Capitals, who Justin Williams came from. Uh, so here is their lineup, uh, according to the team that Isabella Kershidian built. Uh, Alex Ovechkin... The, the, the first line is still absurd. Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, Oshie. It's ridiculous. It's very expensive, too. Their uh, second line, they got to go into the prospect pool a little bit for the rest of the lineup, pretty much. Jakob Vrana, uh, Nicholas Backstrom with Andre Burakovsky. That's still a very good second line. Especially with the way Burakovsky's come on. Yeah. Their third line, Brett Connolly, Lars Eller, Tom Wilson. That's still not terribly different. From like mm-hmm. I think they even had that line earlier this season. Tom Wilson was such a pain in the playoffs too. Yeah, I, uh, unbelievable. Like the best week of hockey he's ever played. Yeah, it crazy. Strong. <laughs> so frustrating. Um, and then their fourth line is exciting. It's it's bad, <laughs> but it's exciting. Devonte Smith Pelly, who they signed uh, to a two way deal too. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good bet for him. I think so too. Hey, do you need cheap help? Can I play with Alex Ovechkin? 
You bet. Okay. Um, and I, yes, it's two way, but because of how cheap it is and how desperate Washington is, I think he sticks. I think that's a Me smart too. deal that he's I also think he's got the skills. He just was in some positions that really didn't work for him. So you go from never getting played in Montreal to Terrible the Devils who sucked. Uh, so Devontae Smith Belly right. on the right of Jay Beagle. And exciting for Sasky Stewart and a fair chunk of our listeners, Nathan Walker. Who, if this lineup holds up, would become the first Australian-born player to ever play in the National Hockey League? Wow, uh, that's kind of so, cool. That'd be pretty cool. And Riley Barber, who I've never heard of, uh, <laughs> would be their spare forward on defense. Yeah, this is kind of rough. Yeah. Eh, well, eh. they got to make some young bets. Uh, Dmitry Orlov with Matt Niskanen with a big signing. Yeah, wow. but Holy. it's a, that's a really good pair. Kristen Dju with John Carlson. And Brooks Orpik with Aaron Ness. Uh, and apparently a bunch of people have been calling for Aaron Ness to make the team. And your extra defenseman is Taylor Chorney. And obviously Holt, Holtby and Grubauer in net. Hmm. That's a fine team. Well, and with a, with a thinner team up front and on defense, you got a pretty good goaltending team. you got to remember, fan bases have skewed views. We talked about how Leaf fans have uh, have a bit of a... Uh, strange view of the world because the Leafs were so bad for so long. Well, the Caps were so great for so long. So they're like, oh, this isn't a President's Trophy winning team. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean you're bad. It doesn't you even mean you're not a the, cup contender you anymore. You don't go from President's Trophy to missing the playoffs. You should be fine. You might. You but might. But I don't think the with team that. looks fine. I think they look fine. Yeah. yeah, you get the major players still there. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Sharp rejoins the Chicago Blackhawks one year, one Whee! million. Um, really... Uh, he had 18 points last year, but again, Dallas wasn't fantastic, so I wonder how skewed that is. Plus, he gets to come home, give it one more shot. Um, I'm actually surprised that Brian Campbell hasn't landed anywhere. I'm surprised he hasn't landed in Chicago. There's always late season, or well, late summer signings, and late is like July 10th. Right. Yeah. Right. Yager hasn't been signed. What? Well, it's July 4th. Yakupov <laughs> was signed by Colorado. Yep. Bernier. Uh, to Colorado for two point seven five million, just one year. Um, That's not bad for him. Get to play behind Simeon Verlamov. Yep, yep. So, um, and hopefully, I, <laughs> I guess I guess Matt Duchesne isn't getting traded. I I don't know what the Avalanche I, are doing. I mean, like I guess they're going to hang on to Matt Duchesne. I really don't know why. At this point, like it's very clear that they don't like each other. I don't know why they're doing that. Yeah, Columbus basically yeah, Sakic's nuts. Columbus basically did nothing. But I think that they're actually in Ilya Kovalchuk. I saw Adrian Dater uh, tweeted something about, uh, you know, Joe Sackick will not be bullied. And I wanted to respond, yes, or the GM of a good hockey team. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Sackick will not uh, be bullied. I mean, uh, yeah, good I guess. Him. No, I guess I get it. Like, I mean. He can be not bullied Eiserman, out of a job. Eiserman <laughs> held to his guns with Jonathan Druin. But, but Eiserman had a good team yeah. mm-hmm. that he assembled. Craig McTavish also held to his guns on Nugent Hopkins and Eberle when he could have moved them. Mm. And they draft McDavid and then fired him. I wonder if emotions are getting in the way here. Because Colorado so. has already turned down at least one very good offer from Matt Duchesne. Maybe the Leafs go after Matt Duchesne. Wouldn't that be sad? <laughs> be cool. Uh, Radulov signs with Dallas today, as, as we know. Uh, Brian Flynn was also signed by Dallas yesterday. We don't know how much... Uh, Dallas made a, like a bunch of moves that like I'm not a giant fan of, but I can't deny that they're not improved. Martin Hansel. Yeah. Okay. So they got Martin Hansel, who I'm not a huge fan of, but he's all right. Three years Mark for Mathot. just under five million each. Yeah. Ooh, really? Yeah. Four, Fourteen point two five over Yee. three years. Um. So Hansel Mathot Bishop Bishop is uh, an improvement on Niemi, even if he's not the Bishop of old, and Radulov. To, <sighs> that's a much better team. Radulov, Sagan, Ben. Oh. I don't think that's going to be a line. You got to spread it out a yeah, little bit. No. <laughs> but, oh, oh, hey, but at the end of the power game. play unit? Yeah. Whoo, but if whoo. I'm the Leafs and I have a one goal lead, <laughs> I'm terrified of what they throw. Oh, in my yes. Eyes, okay? Trevor Daly signs in Detroit. I, I'm stoked that Radulov's out of the division. He was yeah. a good player, man. Yeah, he was, man. Anyway. Uh, Trevor Daly is the notable signing for Detroit. Three years, $9.5 million. Trevor, what are you doing, dude? I don't know why he wants to do that to himself, doing, but man? I guess they're worried with you know Detroit. It makes sense. Cronwall's older. I don't know what they're doing. No, in Detroit. it doesn't. Like, um, like it makes sense. Like Trevor Daly, I thought would have made sense on like a one-year deal for Detroit, and then you trade him to a contender. He wanted term. The only team who would I don't know. You know what? Daly got his cups. 
Yeah. Make your money, hey, you man. you know what's a signing that went sort of unnoticed? And what? this is a re-signing, but moving on from, from Detroit to Edmonton. Zach Cassian got a three-year deal. Oh, I love this deal. Do you yeah. love this deal? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, at just under $2 million each year. I think he's great. Yeah. I think he's great. He's finally found a home. Yeah, pain in the ass for other teams. He's always been a pain in the ass for other teams. He stopped being a pain in the ass for his team is the difference. Yes. Now, with um, McDavid and Dreisaitl, yes. do you think the Edmonton Oilers' worst nightmare was McDavid's numbers leaking to Dreisaitl's camp? Because I do. Oh. Yeah, because in an ideal situation, you sign Dreisaitl first and be like, hey, we're going to give you more than we gave Hall and Nugent Hopkins, and you're going to get like 8 mil. All but this, now that the 13 is out there, he's like, I want 10. Well, all this stuff about Dreisaitl going for nothing less than 9, I don't know. I have not seen enough out of Leon Dreisaitl to... like. I think if oh. I were if I were Pete, Pete Chiarelli, I would have because nothing stays, especially within agent circles, nothing stays private. No, of course not. So you just work on the extension with dry yeah, you and get just the do it, deep, and then go, first. "Hey, McDavid's people, we're going to work on dry saddles first, and then mm-hmm. we're going to talk to you." And don't worry, we're backing up. The I mean, Edmonton's in a unique position. I'm well, the like it's just, just like, McDavid why, can why, do whatever he wants. He can ask for whatever he wants. No, well, but that sure. leak number probably costs Edmonton $2 million? Yes. So? Over Absolutely. Over the course of Dreisaitl's deal? Absolutely. Like, how, how... Just do that deal first and then yeah. go, Connor, we'll yeah. talk to you in mid-July. When we were... Like, when Matthews was shooting the lights out and we were all, like, at our at our most googly-eyed about him, I don't think anyone was saying $10 million. Nope. Nope. But now, like, well, I'd be Stan shocked Coast if he went for, for less than $10 million. Stan Coast had signed for eight, so I was thinking, eh, eight, eight, nine. I don't know, man. I also don't think Yo, that a guy like... you already started the hit pieces on McDavid in Edmonton. Who have? Uh, the Edmonton media. Like, oh, McDavid's hurting his team. Oh, shut up. Oh, it's the best. Are you No, no, me? never tell them to shut up. Let them do it. No, it's the no best. It's way. so fun. Doesn't Edmonton's media start, sort of just decide who needs to leave, and then they just kind of march them to the door? Yeah, they just kind of... Um, it's it's like, like Toronto on, does that, it's too. It's like the South Park episode where they killed Britney Spears with cameras. That's like, okay... Now replace Britney Spears with Jordan Eberle, and that's what <laughs> that's what everyone in Edmonton did. How Dan will, Taylor Hall how and will everyone. How the harvest grow if no one dies? Yes, you need. How to will kill. the harvest grow? <laughs> we must kill for the harvest. <laughs> <laughs> that episode's so messed up. It's that's great. really weird, man. You guys are weird. Um, we read the original story in like grade eight class. It's uh, the lottery. Oh, that's uh, the show. The ending of the show, the South Park episode, is a parody of the lottery. Oh, I never got it's to. A, it's I a never town read that, book. that that every uh, things like every four years they, or every year they kill one person. <laughs> and they yeah. de- how do they decide? Uh, there's a lottery. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, it's a, oh. it's a great book. Oh, I got to read yeah, that. Okay. <laughs> and then the South Park, yeah, it's a parody of that. And so, they killed Brittany. I was I was yeah. like, come on, they didn't come up with this. No. I want them investigated. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, okay, they got it from a book. That yeah. makes sense. So hey. I, uh, I I think it's interesting. <laughs> we read To I, Kill a Mockingbird like three times in school. I know. Sorry. <laughs> I think if you are, um, if you are the Toronto Maple Leafs, heed this warning. Heed this warning. Sign Nylander to, to whatever you think you guys can figure out. And when you go into the next next summer with Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews and you want to extend them next summer because you don't want to wait a third year. You don't want to see how great they'll be in their third mm-hmm. year. You want to extend them next year. Mm-hmm. And also, you don't want them to get offer sheeted, right? Let's be honest. That will never happen. You get Mitch Marner done first. Because you, you know what you'll pay. Yes. Mm. Because whatever Austin Matthews gets paid, that's how all other contracts yeah. are judged. See, that's going to go poorly. Mitch Marner is already supposedly not so super stoked about. Uh, oh, look at his contract compared to Matthews. His bonuses, like his salary after bonuses, is like half. Well, he should realize he's not Matthews. He's not no, Matthews, right? But he's a very he didn't good sign for a lot of the. He didn't get a lot of the bonuses he could have, and I think he's not stoked about. You know that. what? He's nineteen, twenty years <laughs> old. Yeah, I get why he's upset about that. Mitch Marner, you will be a very generationally wealthy man. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be cool. Just, just be patient. And this is another reason why I want them to just be cool, man. Just what do cool. you do with a drunken sailor for the next two seasons? Just um, who cares? Go nuts. Florida signs Dadnoff. So, who's Yager's forty-five? Bring him on. 
Uh, Verbata also signs in Florida for some reason. He had a good season last year, 55 points in 81 games. Not bad. And He's a good player. At, they get him at two and a half million bucks. He's a, good, he was a pretty good player. Huberto resigned. Oh, that was last year. Oh my God, I was like Huberto resigned. We didn't get that yet. <laughs> <laughs> what? I wonder how many more that you've read just now. <laughs> no, there's been no others. There's been no others. Um, so about that Subban trade, oh, crazy. Oh, actually, yeah, a- <laughs> yeah Adam's really. reading an article on NHL.com about signings the staff <laughs> would have made. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? About that all-star team. <laughs> um, L.A. signs Darcy Kemper to back up. Um, Jonathan Quick. Jonathan Quick. Which is... Mm. And sign Mike Camilleri because they want to get older. That's a great deal. Well, that's I. I was surprised New Jersey bought him out. He was overpaid for sure. But like, okay, he's gonna make a million bucks, which is a good deal. That's a great deal. Great deal. Great. But deal. he only scored ten goals last year, and this is a team that can't score goals. Got a hat trick and can still leaves. <laughs> okay, he he can still score. His numbers 30, are still decent. Or twenty. Yeah, he scored thirty percent of his goals against Leafs. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. I didn't man. even think of it that way. I don't know. Toronto I, boy. I don't know what LA is doing. And I don't know, like, I'm, I'm sure we haven't given them enough time to really get in there. But it is time for a retool in L.A., right? I don't think a rebuild. you got Drew Doughty. you got Enzo Kopitar. That's awesome. Well, how time do to... you get rid of Dustin Brown? You can't. <laughs> We've, we could have said that from the start of this podcast four years ago. How do you get rid of Dustin Brown's contract? That contract is ridiculous. Mm. And then they didn't have to. <laughs> and then at the time, the Gabrick deal seemed cool. Yeah. No, you but know. Holy, you know, yeah, you're right. That's but... handcuffing them. Uh, a, about a year and a month into this podcast, they won the cup. So True. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you look at how bad the Kings, uh, you know, prospects look. Not their actual prospects. I mean, like their f- how their future looks. Mm-hmm. Um, ah, they got two cups. <laughs> It'd be nice if Dustin Brown got like an injury and just hopped on Roby to Island. Is allergic to something. Yeah. Have you seen all the everyone's going? Host is allergic to. Sweat, yeah, <laughs> really, and, and a lot of people are going. Well, no, it's a real condition. No, no, I don't think they made up a condition. No, I don't know. A lot of people are pointing out that it is a little bit convenient. It's for the Blackhawks, certainly not for Marion Hosa. Um, I'm not going to say anything because the tweets from Chicago are going to be nasty. I think they're transparent about well, it. I'm simply saying that people are saying that. I'm a Leafs fan. I don't have a leg to stand on here. What's wrong with Joffrey Lupul? Anyone got any clue? No? Overpaid? I think that's his injury. I think it's. I think they want him to enjoy life and go to, uh, what was it? Coachella. Coachella. Every <laughs> festival ever of all time. Um, Anyways, Dustin Brown, 5.8 till 2022. The Wild pick up uh, Ryan, Ryan Murphy on July 1st, $7,000. 2022? In 2019, it's the worst, oh, one of the worst contracts in the his, National his Hockey His finger game. will be itchy, and in 2020, he's going to have and, a good life. And Mike Richards until we're all dead. <laughs> uh, Ryan Murphy, seven, $700,000. I don't know, man. I think Ryan Murphy's a guy that you take uh, a chance on the Minnesota Wild did. Oh, yeah. So what on earth was that? What on earth was that? I don't know. He only played they, 27 games The last Hurricanes year. bought out a guy who made less than a million dollars. Like, to me, the, and his numbers are great, by the way. His advanced numbers are great, but apparently his five-on-five five isn't the best. Wait, so why couldn't they keep him? But he made... I think they're like deep a, on D. I think it was might have been contract limit. It also reeks of someone who must be a pain in the ass or something. Uh, There's got to be. Because he's a former first-round pick, 12th There's, overall, 2011. There's nothing about him on paper that suggests that should have happened to him. There's nothing on paper that suggests he should be making under a million dollars. Like, I I don't know. That's a mystery. What's going on there? But on a bad Carolina team, he only played 27 games. Well, was he a healthy scratch the whole time? I don't know. Uh, maybe that Might was have been. I don't so, know. Interesting. Anyway, I, I think it's good for... Mystery. It's a good depth signing for them. If he works out, great. If he doesn't, then he doesn't work out. Landon Ferraro as well. Uh, Kyle Quincy signs uh, in Minnesota as well. He has a $1.25 million cap hit. Um, he's a defenseman, 31 years old. We all kind of know what Kyle Quincy is all about. Um, but I, it's going to be weird to see him in not a Columbus jersey. Kyle Quincy? Yeah. I remember him in a Detroit jersey. Oh, really? Uh, I'm going to pull on Adam Wild. Can okay. we pause so I can go to the bathroom? Sure. <laughs> I'll go too. <laughs> Anders Limbach signs with Nashville. 
By the way, we're back. Oh. Uh, interesting we're signing wow. with Nashville. A uh, million dollars for Scott Hartnell. I think that's a good deal. Yeah. That's like a that. really good signing. I mean, he had 37 points last year. Uh, and also, and this was their big get, Nick Benino. Benino, Benino, Benino. Now, they still want to add to their forward group, huh? Well, Benino, I think, is like we needed a center because they were really, I think they got exposed, to, especially when Johansson went down. They got exposed at center. Yeah, a lot of people were blaming their uh, loss in the final on not having Johansson, which may be true. But man, if you got one guy, and then behind him you got Kelly Yarncroke and his band of merry men, it's not very good, is it? No. Benino had thirty-seven points in the regular season. Scott Hartnell had thirty-seven points in the regular season. Hmm. Benino makes four point one. Hartnell one. But Benino's a center, and he's Nick Benino, and he's like six years younger. So. Parents, teach your kid to be a right-handed defenseman or a center. <laughs> yes. Those are what matters. Um, or a goalie as good as Carey Price. And also, Benino's uh, a great playoff performer. Nashville will be back in the playoffs. Oh, 100%. So, I think they go right back to contending. That's a pretty good... I think it's a good pickup. And I, I it, it felt like Pittsburgh, after losing Flurry, that it was like nothing could hurt us as much as that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, we kind of glossed over it. Lynn back, back to Nashville is odd. You think so? It is odd. Why? Like, do they plan on burying Soros in the minors for an extra year? Mm. Like, did they maybe see how he was in relief of Rene in the playoffs and go, let's give the kid one more year? Are they trying to... Maybe they know how good he's going to be, so they're trying to keep him in the minors a little extra longer. Helps when you need to re-sign him. What is it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That was very... Because, like, Anders Lindback is not that good. No. Um... Ah, but sorry, one more thing. Um, if remember, we talked about having a left-handed goalie and a right-handed goalie on the same team, and yeah. how does a goalie coach teach that? Well, you got Pecorine all the way up here in Giraffe Land, and UC Saros all the way down here. He'd be the shortest member of this podcast, I think. <laughs> Lindback and Rene are like the same size, so I, I don't know. Maybe they figure, hey, we got. Two goalies who are roughly the same. I, I I really don't know. There's some familiarity there. I don't know. I don't really understand. Brian Boyle is the major get for New Jersey. Uh, after you know they re-signed Keith Kincaid, which was actually a really good deal. Two years, two point five million. That was June 29th. Brian Boyle. Two point five million total or per? Uh, total. Oh, whew. I was about to say per. That's way too much. Um, that's that's t- twice as much as he should be getting. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Brian Boyle signs, and his cap hit is two point five five million dollars. Oh, I thought it was more than that. I thought uh, it was two point seven. Well, he. No, 2.55, according oh, okay. to Sportsnet, anyway. Yeah. $5.1 million over two years. I was surprised the Leafs didn't even make an offer. <sighs> Me too. Me too. However, I look at it, and I and I go, I wonder. Okay, so he's a fourth-line center on the Leafs, right? And if somebody gets injured, then he moves up. And he was a very good center while he was here. He was, And it's weird, because he's like a really good goal-scoring center as well. But For a depth guy, and he didn't score a single goal with the Leafs. Does he make the Leafs better or re-signing him does it just make them the same and I wonder if they looked at it and said we can take that money and we can put it towards other spots Patrick Marlowe Hainsey and as much as you did overpay um, you know let's get better in these positions because that will move the needle a little, little more I think more fits the Leafs style a little better than Boyle a little faster a little, yeah a little bit faster moving he can do a lot of the same things that Boyle can he's not the size of a bus <laughs> you know, but he, he brings a lot of the same things, and I think he fits the Leaf style a little bit better. Okay. Maybe that's what they figure. Like, it's a little strange that Boyle wasn't able to do, like, really anything offensively. Except for in double overtime! Um, yeah, I thought that was a little strange. The Islanders did nothing. They have a couple guys that I've never heard of. Yeah, well, nothing. they did a ton at the expansion draft. They, they did sure a did. ton at the uh, draft draft. So, I think they're all tuckered out. Rangers, and this is the one deal that I actually think was a bit of a steal. Ah, yeah, I agree. I think the I think the Kevin Shattenkirk deal, six point six five million dollars. Kevin Shattenkirk could have got more money than this. He, Kevin Shatt- absolutely could have got, got seven. Could have got more term. He could have got yep. seven years and forty nine million dollars. But he wants to play in New York. He grew up a fan of the Rangers. We knew he was going there. Yep. And he accepted less term and less money. And I think that the, the thing that kills you mostly with contracts, I mean, yeah, money's bad. Money can be bad. But term is the killer. 
term is the real killer in contract. And this isn't that bad. And the, the contract will be done roughly around the same time that Henrik Lundqvist is done. And at that point, you're a completely different team anyway. So, I, yeah, I guess the Rangers are in retool mode. Mm-hmm. Retool mode this year, and then you try to go for it, I guess, the next three. And I guess they've signed Pavlik to uh, to back up uh, Lundqvist. Because I'm assuming they're... Huh? How much is he getting? Oh, $1.3 million for a guy that played eight games last year. His save percentage, you ready for this? Well, he, he, I mean, he only played eight games because of his money, but... Sorry. 8 8 8 was his save percentage. I, I just... I don't understand the merry-go-round. Like, the, you know what this sport needs so bad? What's that? A little bit of thinking outside the box. <laughs> like, it's always the same goalies... It's always the same players. How did Dan Girardi get $3 million? We're not there yet. I know. Don't go there. How, well, and like the same coaches, no matter how much of a disaster they were with their last team, ah, they got an NHL experience. We'll bring them in. Surely, surely you could have got someone who wasn't Andre Pavlik. Anyway. Ottawa made a good move June 28th. Mike Condon, three years, $2.4 million per. Yeah, I saw a lot of people criticize that. I didn't hate that. I didn't hate that either. That's I think fine. when Anderson goes, Condon's the starter. Yeah. I don't know. Well, He's, maybe. Um, and strangely, they gave $3.3 million over two years to Nate Thompson from Anaheim. You know what? He was a, because I think he's the center, right? Yes. He was a guy I kind of wanted the Leafs to target, but he made way more than I thought. I just thought that was like an interesting, like, Nate Thompson, really? Yeah. Uh, he played 30 games last year. I don't know, man. Okay. Brian Elliott signs in Philly. That's a great signing. And Jordan Wheel re-signed in Philly as well, which would have been, that would have been a good pick. But I guess he really liked Philadelphia, like playing there. Don't sleep on Philly. There's an opportunity. Oh, Eve. I think they're going to be pretty damn good. I think so, too. They're going to be pretty scary. <laughs> I think so, too. And with Brian Elliott as, their, as uh, a main goaltender, as long as he is steady. Like last year, as, I know he started bad, but listen to his record. Save percentage sucks. Sure. 26-18 and 3. Not bad. No. Nope. And well, and his second half save percentage. Way better. He went from being the worst goalie in the NHL to one of the best. And Not, then the playoffs hit and he was one of the worst again. 9-10 <laughs> save percentage, 2.55 goals against average. He's, he's he shouldn't be that. your starter. He shouldn't be your starter. And he's not. So there you go. Uh, maybe he is. They're still going kind of platoon. Yep. Philly has... God, it kills me that they used to have Sergei Bobrovsky. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, well, the Penguins re-signed guys that they really needed to keep, um, like Tom Sestito. Oh, wow. Uh, like Greg McKaig. Like Frank Greg McKaig's Corrado. okay. Frank, Frank Corrado. Corrado's okay. Yeah. No, I'm just, Tom Sestito just made me laugh. Oh, that's, um, that's so ridiculous. But obviously the big deals of the day were Justin Schultz getting extended. Three yep. years, $16.5 million. Greg McKaig is exactly the kind of player the Penguins <laughs> turn into a player who ends up making $2 million plus dollars one day. He's your Brian Rutz, Jake God, Gensel. Just drives me nuts. Yeah, I wonder what the Penguins can do with they him. Are, they're almost like what New England's done with football. Like, they're just able, they have a system, and if, you can, if you've got the skills to fit that very specific role on that team, you'll, you'll succeed. And then when you leave the team, you're overpaid no matter what. Yes, yeah, and you're never oh, okay. as successful as you were with the Patriots. Right, but it doesn't matter. Money. No. Uh, Matt Hunwick signs $2.25 million per year. It's 6.75 over three years. Yeah, three is um, a little, that's a little much. I take, I take Hainsey, I take the Hainsey deal over the Hunwick deal. And I think that's probably why Hunwick is a penguin and Hainsey is a leaf. Yeah, Myrtle had a really good uh, article on that kind of, because if you look at the hero charts between Hunwick and Hainsey, there's really not much between them. Mm-hmm. But Hainsey has faced much tougher competition than Hunwick, really. Um, but again, Hunwick, I think, fits okay with Pittsburgh, if you're a Pittsburgh fan listening to this. Um, moves his feet well, can move the puck well, and a criticism was he kind of got to piggyback on the Matthews line. Well, I mean, Pittsburgh's got two of those, so He'll be I wouldn't okay. worry about it. Um, Anthony Emmy also signs in Pittsburgh as their backup, seven hundred grand. That is a good signing. The idea that he's going to play thirty or forty games for them, like I think it was Jim Rutherford suggested, uh, is asinine. That's insane. You're a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing what Dallas just did? What's wrong with you? San Jose. Joe Thornton. Eight million dollars for Joe Thornton. 
that's like the kind of deal I I wouldn't have been too upset like if the Leafs offer it to him maybe next year just because it's one year and again you're spending like a drunken sailor but 50 points man that's crazy that's I wonder crazy. if it's like San Jose really didn't have any options and Joe Thornton knew that and was like you're gonna have to pay me now you well, he got, he got a lot of calls. And again, that's a free agent thing. It doesn't matter if you're re-signing with your team. If almost every team in the National Hockey League calls you and gives you an offer, mm-hmm. what's he worth? Five and a half mil? Six? Roughly around Patrick Marlowe money? He got more offers. And, you know, wasn't terribly interested in the term. He would have been great in Nashville, man. It sounded, I, think, I'm, I think they would have been in on that. I think they would have been in on that, but I kind of get the impression the Leafs were close-ish on Thornton. He signs one year in San Jose. Ooh, who are we going to get to replace Bozak? There's your answer. Mark Edward Vlasic also re-upped. He got a eight-year contract. He's 30 years old. $56 million. He will make $7 million a season until he is 38 years old. Good for Vlasic him. Vlasic is spelled S-E-A-B-R-O-O-K. <laughs> um, that's, what, that's what that deal is, right? A, that's a big contract. A great defenseman who you just gave. Wait, he's 30 now? He's 30 now. And he signed for... That's crazy. And they that's waited until July 1st to get him. That's insane. That's probably what the problem was. Uh, Martin Jones also re-signed. He will make $5.75 million a year uh, over the next six years. That's so a nice little deal. It's a great deal for a goalie that, you know, I mean, his save percentage, again, not very high, but 35, 23, and 6. Those are the results. That's what really happened. Mm-hmm. Save percentage is 9-12. Goals against average is 2.4. So, not bad. Uh, Antoine Bebo, Leafs minor league goalie. I think there's a goalie to be salvaged there, Sharks fans. Um, very athletic, very young. Streaks of being incredible. Played two games with the Leafs. Looked like an NHL goalie. Uh, for whatever reason, has gotten worse in each year of his professional career. I don't <laughs> know what it is there. I think it's between the years. Right. I don't think it has anything to do with ability. Um, Bo Bennett is really the big signing for St. Louis, if you want to call it that. But they got him at a really reasonable price for a guy that put up almost twenty points, mm. six hundred fifty grand. Nice and cheap. Uh, did you see his Twitter picture? No. So it's a picture of him at the draft, uh, and he's clearly wearing an old Penguins jersey. Mm. But then the de- he put the Devils logo over the Penguin, and then he put. Uh, like he very messily put a blues logo over oh. that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it's pretty funny. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, Chris Kunitz goes to Tampa Bay. That was a quiet one. It was overshadowed by the next signing that I'm going to mention, but Chris Kunitz, one year, two million bucks. He had 29 points last year. It was not his best season. He's 37 years old. Good deal. Why not? Good deal. Why the heck if not? If you think you're going deep in the playoffs, that's a good deal. Uh, Dan Girardi. What? Uh, why? How come? Dan Girardi got two you? years. Here, wh- what have you done with Steve Eisenman? Who would you rather have, Hainsey or Girardi? They had the exact same contract. List, list. Uh, how many defensemen are in the NHL? I don't know. All but I'll take all but ten of them probably over Dan Girardi. I uh, I don't understand what you're doing. Well, he works hard. He's a rugged guy. But look, you can find all kinds of guys like that in the minors. He's I am, not good. I am. Ab- I was thunderstruck I, that Dan Girardi. Got got Th- six thunderstruck because the lightning. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Damn, I was absolutely like it was flabbergasted. How did Dan Girardi, who was run out of New York because they're like he can't play in the NHL anymore? I don't get it. Well, and oh, and did you hear Eisenman's quote about it? Well, our internal analytics say. <laughs> What does that mean? Your internal analytics. Now, is that stop a, it? Is that stop. lack of thinking outside the box? Is that what you're talking about when with you know he's he's so. just played so we're gonna put him in, we he's played some games so we're gonna give it a shot. There's other guys available that do what Dan Girardi does. Cody Franzen better for does cheaper. better. You could have had Cody Franzen for 800 grand. I don't think I would ever confuse Cody Franzen for Dan Girardi. Like I I think they do different things, mm-hmm. but surely there's someone else out there who you don't have to give three million bucks for the next two years to. Yes. Um, on his hero chart, Dan Girardi's sh- shot suppression is not there. It's a zero. It's a zero. I've never it seen that. Exist. I've never and seen. He played that. a full season. There are there is a sample size big enough over the last two I, years. I've never seen that either on some chart. It's fun. Uh, he's he's super Dave. 
Yeah. He just gets in front of the puck and just tries to block it as hard as he can. I don't I don't understand. Vancouver signs Anders Nilsson from Buffalo. Two years, two and a half each year. So a $5 million contract for a goalie that had actually pretty good numbers considering his record was 10 and 10 and 4. 10, 10 and 4. Yeah, that's a tandem that could be either pretty worth it or pretty bad. Uh, 923 save percentage. Yep. 267 uh, goals against average. Yeah, only 26 games, but I don't know. That's a guy I take a shot at. I, two point two point five is a lot, but I'm I think the goalie market was actually pretty alive this year. I think people were really looking for backups. Yeah, and if you're Vancouver, you're just trying to hold the fort until Thatcher Demko's ready. Yeah, yep. Uh, Bermistrov also in, he gets nine hundred thousand dollars. Vancouver did okay. They did. Michael Del Zotto, They gave him three million over three million a year over two years. Uh, Sam Gagne. That was I think a really really good pickup. Sam Gagne had eighteen goals and thirty two assists. Uh, with Columbus last year. He was a great pickup for them because they basically picked him off the, the scrap heap. Yeah. On a good team, though. On a good team. So this will be the interesting thing. And also, like... I don't know why... Are you tanking or are you not? Well, that's... Okay, so Vancouver's signings in isolation, if you just look at the signings, you go, wow, there's good value in all of those signings or potential good value. I don't know if they have the prospect pool to tank. <laughs> but what... Yeah, what is the point? Yeah, like you can't go young if you don't have young... So I I don't know I guess they got to make signings like this I guess and don't forget they they're did fine sign Gabranson. but like, no one's scared of Vancouver yeah I don't no know one's what scared they're of that team I'm not really sure what they're trying to do uh, Vegas not really a huge player not really surprising Oscar Dansk was the only one I saw now what uh, what do you know about Oscar Dansk I feel like he used to be very highly touted um, I don't remember who he was drafted by I feel like he was drafted fairly high. Um, and they need another AHL goalie. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got, they got, actually, don't they only have two goalies left? Or before Dan? I don't know. They, they got Pickard, Flurry. they lost Barubi <laughs> mm-hmm. to Chicago, and now they got Dansk. I think they need another one, actually. Could probably use another. Don't know. Still have no idea what Vegas is doing. I had another conversation the other day with someone just... Not sure. They have uh, Maxime Legacy. Oh. So there you go. Cool. Son of Manny? I hope doubtful. so. <laughs> yeah, doubtful. Uh, Dmitry Orlov resigns on June 30th. $5.1 million, six years, so it's a $30.6 million contract. Yeah, I saw some people wondering if that was maybe the uh, Matt Niskanen effect. Maybe. Evgeny Kuznetsov. July the 2nd. This is a deal. Eight years, $62.4 million, $7.8 million. Now, he is a 25-year-old, so you're not really worried about term there. But that is a lot. He scored 60 points last year. 20 goals. Well, 19 goals, 40 assists. He's a very good player. I think think Johansson might be in that ballpark. If that's dry what sidle. Is, dry sidle. Like, if... It's funny. With all the dry sidle rumors, I think you tap dance if he only gets what Kuznetsov got. Oh, yeah. I still don't know if it's a great great idea. By the way, breaking signing. Oh. Blockbuster. This is going to change the Pacific Division. Mm-hmm. The San Jose Sharks have signed forward Brandon Bolig to a one-year deal. Oh, great. Um, okay. Winnipeg. Last team. We've made it through them all. That's funny. <laughs> Okay, great. Okay. Kulikov, we don't uh, know. Adam Jeff blared me. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, we got we got random volley. <laughs> Kulikov resign or sorry, signs in in uh Winnipeg, but they also might actually have a goaltender now. Maybe. Maybe. Winnipeg is a uh, their off season so far is a big old fart. Steve Mason is going to make 4.1 million dollars Who each I think year will be okay. Two. But not really because he's been okay. Not necessarily the answer. He's coming off a very bad year. I think he's an okay goalie coming off a very bad year, and Dmitry Kulikov is probably an okay defenseman coming off a very bad year. You're paying Kulikov quite a bit. Are you? I, I can't. I, there's no contract listed here. It's. Uh, I feel like he got four years, three million bucks ish for four years, something Whoa. like that. Yeah, Jesse, look that up. And Mason, I feel like is. Not nearly as bad, but I don't know. What did the Jets Kulikov's really do to improve? contract is uh, 4.3 Whoa. over three years. 
I don't. When did he earn that? When did he get that money? Ah, God, we're going to have a lockout. (laughs) Um, Steve Mason, I. I, I I don't understand why they haven't been bold once. Like, <sighs> go and take a risk. Steve Maybe Mason they tried. Is, Steve Mason's not a risk. Like, man. Brian Elliott was a rumor. Um, but, you know, devil's advocate, regardless of the money they're spending on him, you're going from uh, Hellebuck Hutchison to Hellebuck Mason. Much better. That's better. It might and even Hellebuck, be enough to make the playoffs. Who and knows? Hellebuck might be still good one day. Yeah, he's, I just think he just like got completely thrown to the wolves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Steve Mason, four point one million dollars. They'll be okay. Honestly, we we said it last year. All Winnipeg needs is average goaltending. Just give them average, and you know they'll, what it make, was? they'll be great. Uh, a lot of people were complaining after July first that the Leafs didn't do anything. Then they obviously did something very big with Marlowe. But I just looked at all the moves made on July first, and I went, "Yeah, yeah you want in on that?" <laughs> That's that's what you're dying for? You want a little bit more of that Ron Hainsey action? Like a deal that not too many people are complaining that much about, but they're not no, overly I stoked? Don't, I don't hate it. Actually, I, I quite like it because I think it's just stable. Who cares? It's stable. We yeah. have a lot of money to spend for the next two years. He signed a two-year deal, whatever. Like, I, if you're going to overspend, like, at least they overspent on Patrick Marlowe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Mm. If Absolutely. anything, you're better off overspending on the top guys. <laughs> or are you? I don't know. Because the top guys are Dan Girardi, apparently. I don't know. Well, and now now here's a question. What are we talking about for the rest of the summer? Well, uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a couple free, agency, uh, free agents, I'm sure, to clean up on Thursday. Yeah, so we're doing... We usually go down to one a week by this time. We're going to do two this week. Yeah, uh, this is our last two-week show. Mm-hmm. Two week, per week. Two show per week. Week. Yes. Good, until good words. September. Yeah. I gotta be honest with you, I'm pooped. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm really tired. Like, I know. I kept reminding myself, like, all right, bring that energy during the show, and I just kept. Remembering. I'm pooped, man. I'm tired. It's a, like it was a great season, but it was a draining season, especially with the expansion draft. Write it was this, so tiring. I'm gonna write this damn book. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> every day I'm like, I'm gonna start writing my book. So the the plan for the rest of the summer is to have on as many guests as we possibly can. Sure. Uh, we ran into a. Shaven headed uh, Faisal Kamisa. Mm-hmm. So we're looking to book so him in the next couple. On soon. I know you're going to be on vacation in a couple of weeks, so we'll do a best of show then. Yep. Uh, and then, you know, so we're, you know, we're winding it down just a little bit for the next two and a half yeah. months. And if then you're we're going to crank it back up. Yeah. If you're new here, we're sorry, but we do that every summer. And if you're old here, <laughs> um, uh, we're still sorry. What day are we picking? Tuesdays? I think Tuesdays. 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 Done. It's committed. All right. Tuesday. Subject to change. Do we have a press conference today? <laughs> yes. Excellent. Yes, we course. also, I think, need to get back to checking on what's going on in Liberty Village. I think we can bring that back. Yes. There was just so much information that all that sort of stuff kind of fell by the wayside. There was so much stuff to get well, through. And, and a lot of people in Liberty Village almost died over this past weekend. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Mrs. Tangle was uh, having a page. good laugh. Did you see all that, Jesse? I did. <laughs> you know what? Let's a, save it for Thursday. We have a we'll question from Sherbert. Sherbert Hoover. <laughs> oh, okay. You buy a nice... Mem- member of the National uh, Lacrosse All-Star Team. <laughs> you buy a nice craft six-pack. Bring it home. Do you drink it from the bottle or pour it in a glass? Uh, I'm a drink it from the bottle kind of guy. Me too. When you drink, when you pour something out, you lose fizz or you lose cold or you, you know, just, I'm a bottle guy. A lot of people are like, eh, I don't like how a can tastes. Like how, how over the moon crazy galactic are your taste buds? Where you're like, all I taste is coins and grossness. Like, no, it's a can. I don't drink the uh, beer. If it's don't a Guinness, don't lick the can. How about that? If it's a Guinness, it's in a glass and it's poured out. Guinness is different because it looks cool, and also it feels wrong to drink it from a. Yeah, you can't a drink can. Guinness from a can, and it Smithics needs to too. air. It needs to. You need yeah. to pour it one specific way. Yeah, gulp it. Don't sip it. Oh, that's a that's a tip I got from. I love Guinness. Oh, yeah, so good. good. Um, Jesse, keep going. It's good, but you got to gulp it. If you sip it, it's gross. Uh, Super Saiyan Leafs two writes on Reddit. <laughs> Would you rather <laughs> have and Leafs? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, and he's Leafs two, so there was clearly a Super Saiyan Leafs taken. 
blank, and then a Super Saiyan Leafs one, and then a Super Saiyan Leafs two. So, anyways, would you rather have Yager than Marlow? Yager has more points in the last two seasons, better possession numbers, and maybe cheaper. Tell you why, Marlo. Skating. Yeah. His skate, not and not against anything against Yager, but I see Yager as almost like what, for Leaf fans, what Jason Allison was when he was here. Uh, power, mm. power play specialist, guy that can put up a lot of points, but not a lot of foot speed. And the thing with Ma- Marlow, and I, I think he'll be val- valuable to whoever he signs with for sure. And, and I don't think I don't think Yager was a fit here, just in general. But I think Marlow has the foot speed where you could put him with. I don't know. People are saying Matthews. I don't know that it's going to be Matthews, Nylander, Marlow. I don't know what the line combination is going to be. But I this think guy, someone's got to go. He's got the speed, hmm. right? So. Uh, and, and there's an opportunity for Patrick Marlowe to score potentially more points than he did last year just based on who he's playing with. What if the Leafs are able to trade JVR for defensive help and they sign Yager to a cheap deal? That wouldn't be too bad. <gasps> wouldn't be too bad. You have the youngest, oldest team in the league. <laughs> <laughs> the very old and the very young, nothing in the middle. Yeah, I don't uh, think Yager will ever, uh, he'll he'll ever play in Canada. No. Like, it's just, he's in it for the love of the game yeah. and also the money. <laughs> it would be interesting if he signed in, like, Arizona. I could see it working there. I don't. They're no, you know offense. how many people that would annoy? You're walking away from Shane Doan, and then you bring, oh, in, yeah. bring in this geriatric <laughs> guy, ignoring the fact that Yager's still actually good. Yeah. But, you know. We were, at, we were Jesse and I went to Puck Talks to, uh, to oh, see yeah. Steve. And a guy in the audience asked, <laughs> the question was, I'm, it wasn't even like really a question, it was more of a statement. It was, I'm really mad at the Arizona Coyotes for what they did to Shane, Z- Shane Doan. Comment, please. And <laughs> and it was Steve, it was Scott Wheeler from the Star, who is also at The Athletic and Pension Plan Puppets, you know from all those. A ton of stuff. And uh, Mike and Buffalo. Uh, and <laughs> all of them were like, why? <laughs> like, and the room good. started. There was audible laughter yeah, in the room. Like, it was great. Are you the only one that doesn't Look, know? <laughs> I get it. I Coyotes fans, and I still get tweets about it. I get it. He's not good. So, there's your answer. It's not mm-hmm. good. And they offered him a position in management. Yeah. Yeah. Come he's on. He's not a. It's Shane Doan's fault that he's not a Coyote right now. It's not John Chaka. Stop that. Stop it. Also, John Chaka has to move this team out of not making the playoffs since 2011 to making the playoffs. Yep. John Chaka has to move on from people, man. That's just the way it is. Shane Doan's <laughs> mindset, and I, I understand and love where Shane Doan is coming from because he's a he's a true blue sort of guy. Mm-hmm. Loves the team. But his comments after Hansel got traded last year, or this last season, for two months ago. Oh, I forgot about that. Remember when he said, oh, it's like all your friends get traded, and it's like, yeah. what the hell were you expecting, man? Like, are, you're 20 years in this business, and you're still expecting it not to be a business? It was always a business. I, you know what? For all the money that is poured into the sport, um, we got that awesome behind-the-scenes video with Jim Benning mm-hmm. at the draft, which I guess we'll have to get into next show. Mm-hmm. We saw Vegas's performance at the expansion draft. Uh, some things that I've heard behind the scene for uh, free agency. The lack of foresight and preparation from players and management is stunning. Stunning. You wouldn't believe how mu- how many decisions are made in the moment. The Jim Benning video, which I will get into it, but I'm not going to make fun of Jim Benning. I thought it was great. And I don't think... It's cool that they did that. It was really cool that cool. they did that. He was funny. He was charming. Um, I don't think he did anything in the video that a lot of other teams do. But like... Wouldn't do. It was just strange to me that, like, it's so strange to me that you have an entire year to plan for a draft, and then your pick comes. And you still don't know. And you're still arguing about who you're picking. Yeah. I can't believe that. I can't, cannot believe that. You you, you give us a week on this show, and we'll be like, all right, so we got a, we got our pick in a week. Yeah. You know why? Okay, if this guy because comes up, Because you have to make a decision him. and then move forward. It's very, very bizarre to me. Like it, it, yeah. A lot of the stuff that we've seen over the last month, and some of the things I heard this past week, it is uh, it's shocking how many decisions are made in the moment. Shocking. You wonder how so many mistakes get made. Yeah, that's how. But hey, they all know better. Final question. They're the ones with the jobs, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Trill Castle. <laughs> Sup. What's up? 
Odds on the Leafs icing the all Mar line. <laughs> so it would be Marlow, Marner, Martin, Marinson, and Marchenko. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Oh. Uh, yeah, seriously. If you want a Leafs jersey, but you're not sure who to get on it, Mar. just get the get M A for sure. Mm-hmm. Mar probably. But then you rule out Matthews, right? Yeah, right. So I would True. say just start with M.A. and then figure out the rest later. Who will be the first person to get a Patrick Marlowe jersey in the Tro- on the Toronto Maple Leafs? And all San Jose fans are all throwing up right now. Or an Alexi Marchenko jersey. Um, does he take Brown's number? Number 12. Yeah. Uh, probably, because Brown, yeah. wasn't he like 60-something? Yeah, I don't think it matters to him. I don't think he yeah. It's not a big deal. But Marlowe's been 12. So you're does Connor Brown get traded, guys? Yeah, No. Nope. No. I think he brings too many good things to the Leafs. Now, what does he get? What does Hyman get? I have no idea, dude. I Hyman, think, I'm not. I'm not. That I'm not worried of. about. No. No. He Hyman, makes under two million. What do you make? Sure. Hyman. Hyman scored eight goals on the Matthews line last year. Something like that. Yeah. Like so. Okay. You can. He's you, a guy I expect to have a big season. Actually, you can well, a bigger season. I think he. I think he can hit 15 goals, like just all summer. He just needs to fire the puck at the net. Fire the puck at the damn net. Figure it out, Zach. You know what? Sorry, real quick aside. I don't know how much of a of a difference this would have made, but uh, I got fan questions sent to me in video form, and I got to ask some Leaf players the questions. And one was, how do you tape your stick? And it wasn't addressed to any Leaf in particular, but I asked Zach Hyman. So he doesn't tape the toe of his blade because he's got to go in the corner, and it's just gonna that's just going to be a... It's just going to get ruined anyway, right? I wonder if that screws up his shot. Like, is it that one thing? No. or I don't no, know. I, just, I, th- I, I think spoke to someone about that. I think he's good enough that when he gets the puck on his stick, it's in the middle. He also missed, like, five layups last year. I can, like, remember yeah. five, I was at a, I was at five a, empty netters. like that. The, that Ducks game where Matthews tipped it in with one hand. And Hyman, I think, had three bur- <laughs> breakaways. I think, he'll get yeah. more goals next year. Um, but I think the fact that he only scored that many points on the Matthews line actually works against him. Yes, he brings a lot to the team, but you can also go, well, we've got other guys that can do that. Or you could say, you glued me to your MVP for 82 games. Clearly I'm important to the team. Or they can say, well, we've got got a bunch of other wingers. I don't think it's (laughs) going to be a particularly contentious deal. And I think both him and Brown get two or three years. Yep. Max. Yeah. All right. Is that it? That's it. Okay, guys. Well, it's our first of two. On the last week that we do too, any parting thoughts on this particular show? I wish I had more energy. Holy smokes, Guys, man! I'm, sorry. I'm burnt out. I'm actually burnt out. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think that has to do with you working at four in the morning. No, <laughs> no, it's this show and this show <laughs> I alone. I don't think it's this. <laughs> That's the reason you're burnt, drank, burnt out. I drank a lot with my father-in-law last night, so that that was me. That would be nice. Good, he's, Jesse. He's any parting thoughts? Any wisdom? Um. If you believe in something, you should let the birds take it to the sky. Ew. That was weird. <laughs> what? I don't understand what that I was. Just, I put words. To Someone put that on a t-shirt, please. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for listening. We'll, uh, we'll be back Thursday. Probably be a little bit of a shorter show because there's going to be less to talk about. <laughs> okay. I'll give five bucks to the first person who gets that tattooed on the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.